This this will uh, okay if I begin. Of course. Yeah. All right. So now this is um, Tuesday, July thirteenth, twenty twenty one. The Cohasset Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, sitting as a Board of Appeals are myself, Woody Chittick as Chair, Lee Darst, Matt Watkins, Mike Dickey, and Charlie Higginson. Uh, Dave McMorris is expected as Vice Chair is expected momentarily. So we only have two, not much housekeeping. Um, of course, there we always save the minutes till the end. Uh, just does anybody know of any uh, conflicts either August 3rd or September 7th that we should be aware of? Otherwise, why don't we uh, hold, you know, keep those and we'll check with Dave McMorris what he did. I'm actually, I'm gonna be away, but I should be back. Um, by seven o'clock uh, for the meeting on August 3rd. Okay. So Dave, we, we've opened the meeting and are just um, going you know, around uh, about the uh, next two meeting dates, August 3rd and September 7. You, as far as you know, are you okay in both dates? I am. Great. Okay. So why don't we, um, kind of uh, commence our, our um, agenda. We have one, two, three, four, five continued hearings, actually four, I'll explain the one that we're dropping. But uh, the first hearing is a continuation of 147 South Main Street um, for um, special permits under section eight and also and section nine and also 14 wetlands. So. Um, Adam Brodsky, this is a continued hearing. Do you have a presentation to make? I, or? I, I do, Mr. Chittick. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Adam Brodsky, I'm a land use and environmental attorney, and I represent the applicant, John Schiavo, the trustee of the Schiavo Family Trust. And if I could ask uh, Ms. Orm if she could please promote Pat Fisher. Pat is one of our architects and our code uh, code consultant. <laughs> we would like to have her available. Thank you very much. No problem. So we submitted additional information to the board to answer to the best of our abilities the question posed by Mr. Chittick in his June 1 memo. And, and that's my July 7th letter with attachments. And I'm not going to go through it point by point but if I might just touch briefly on each of the subject matters. Uh, first, we were asked to provide dimensions of the former structure, uh, which we've done to the best of our ability. We've conducted an extensive review of records, uh, both in Mr. Schiavo's position as well as the town. Um, and we've provided all of the information that we've been able to develop. Uh, with that said, I would just note that the building height and the volume of the former building is not, in our opinion, relevant because the new structure is indeed conforming to all dimensional requirements. Um, second, um, we have provided civil site plans that showed both existing and proposed conditions as well as proposed surface materials and Jeff can speak to any of those questions. Um, we were asked to address in more detail the application of section 8.7 of the bylaw with respect to our proposed increase in the number of residential units from two to three. Um, and I, I do would like to make the point that actually our building coverage, our building footprint um, actually goes down in very small respects from the former building to the new building. So the new building footprint um, is smaller, um, but to the extent that we're asking for relief to go from three, excuse me, to go from two units to three units um, I've respectfully suggested that that's a modest extension of that non-conforming use of the building. And I've articulated to the best of my ability why there will be no detrimental uh, impacts associated with that. And I would make a, a note that um, I think that's even more so because as we've reported to the board, Mr. Scavo has reached agreement with the Cohasset Affordable Housing Steering Committee to deed restrict one of the units as affordable. So again, we're proposing three units. Um, one is being proposed as an affordable unit 
And as you likely know, as a result, all three of those units will be counted as affordable on the town's subsidized housing inventory. And we suggest that the town is uh, better off with you know, one affordable unit than the alternative to this project, which is for Mr. Schiavo to simply reconstruct the former building, which contains two market units. And so we suggest that uh, not only is that uh, modest uh, extension or enlargement of that use uh, not detrimental, it's in fact beneficial to the town because we have the ability now to provide an affordable unit. Um, we were asked to address the suggestion um, that the apartment use was illegal, and there's no evidence uh, to support that assertion. Uh, to the contrary, everything that we've developed uh, indicates that that's a lawful, uh, lawful use and can be maintained on the site. And we provided you with a history. Briefly, the building was constructed in 1953, prior to the adoption of zoning in 1955. The apartments were constructed in approximately 1956, and that's actually reflected on the town assessor's records beginning in 1957, which is the first one we could locate, which reflects that there was a garage and shop and apartments on the property. I'd suggest that uh, if that was an illegal use, it would not be recognized by the town assessors on its records as early as 1957. Uh, the property has been consistently taxed as both uh, uh, commercial and residential, and we provided you with all of those records, as well as provided you with utility records, which indicate that the utilities have been separately billed as commercial and residential use going uh, as far back as we could find records. All of that is verified and confirmed by Mr. Schiavo and his sworn affidavit, which we also submitted to the board. And uh, additionally, I believe that we've presented overwhelming evidence that the parking within the front and side yard setbacks also is lawfully non-conforming. Um, I mean, in fact, you, you can see in some of the documents provided to you, particularly Exhibit H, which is the handwritten assessor's card, which actually has photographs showing uh, par vehicles parked in the front yard setback as well as the side yard setback. I'm not an expert in cars, I can't date those, um, but those, um, those uh, uh, look, look to be old cars. Uh, we've also presented historic aerial photographs as Exhibit J, those were previously provided, as well as affidavits from people currently testifying as to their observations of parking within the setback. And we also provided to you uh, uh, the affidavits that actually were presented to the Zoning Board of Appeals in 1991 in connection with the 1991 enforcement appeal which is exhibit A to our submittal. Now I also, and I've explained this to the best of my ability to the board previously, um, I don't think that the 1991 enforcement appeal is relevant. I draw an entirely different conclusion regarding what occurred based upon the documents that I've reviewed as well as my consultations with Mr. Schiavo, who uh, has personal knowledge of those events. Um, I don't think it's necessarily relevant, but if there is any takeaway it was that in 1991, Mr. Schiavo proved to the board that up to 24 cars had been stored on the rear portion of the site, which is known as Lot 90, prior to 1955. That was the issue that was before the board in 1991. So that's a very brief summary of all of the information contained in the letter. Um, we're uh, here to answer any additional questions, but we're uh, asking the board to please move this forward and grant us uh, uh, relief. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay. Let me um, see if Dave McMorris has questions first. I do. All right. Um, particularly, I'd like to look first at the parking. Um, it appears to me from the latest plan that's been submitted that there is no parking space within five feet of a lot line. Is that accurate? That is correct. Okay. And there's only one and a half spaces that are within 25 feet of the front lot line. Is that right? That, that's correct as well. Okay. So that that one and a half spaces are really the only non-conforming spaces on this plan. 
Right, and it's more conforming than the existing scenario where it's paved right up to South Main Street. Right, I, I understand that. Okay, um, it's it's the whole parking history here seems to me to be a little bit ironic in the context of what we're doing because it looks like the parking disputes in the past all had to do with there being too many somebody thinking there were too many cars on the lot and the owner trying to show that they had the right to park that many cars on the lot. What you're seeking from us is a departure from the required number of spots on the lot to a much fewer number of spaces. So instead of trying to get more cars parked, you're trying to get less cars parked, um, which is not a bad thing, but it's, it is kind of, we're looking, it's hard to harmonize all the evidence on the parking, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, I think, you know, I, I do have a concern on the parking volume. Um, the, way I, the way I'm looking at this is there's six spaces that have to go for the, the um, apartment units, the dwelling units. There, that would leave 11 spaces for the commercial spaces that are there, commercial units. Um, on the latest plan, there's almost 2,300 square feet of net gross, net, net um, floor area in the commercial space, which would mean 23 spaces should be created for those. So we're looking at a, a difference essentially of 12, 12 fewer spaces than are required by the bylaw. Is that correct? My interpretation of that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. Um, that leads to, my, I guess the crux of the, of the problem that I have with the parking is depending on what goes in those commercial spaces, um, you know, there are some uses in a commercial space that require a lot of parking. If you've got, for instance, a nail salon, you could have four employees, five employees. You could have eight different people there at the same time. It requires a lot of parking. If you've got a CPA's office, you've got one person parking, maybe two, and you've got one or two clients there in an hour. It's, it's a much, there's much less impact in say a professional space than there is in a retail space or in a service space. Um, and I'm curious as to how you would propose to address that. I guess that, Adam, that'd be you. Yes, sir. No, thank you. Thank you. I was just uh, looking at my notes. Um, I believe the intention here is that there was never a desire to have an intensive retail use. I believe that Mr. Schiavo was thinking that it was more going to be uh, office as opposed to retail, but he wants some flexibility since he doesn't know what the tenant mix is going to be. Um, and I, I, I understand that, but I think for us to do our job, we can't build in a lot of flexibility that might create a serious parking issue on the property. No, but if, if we propose, a, 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 we can do this in several different ways, Mr. McMorris. Um, one, uh, we can come in and you can condition this permit on us bringing to you the proposed use when we have a tenant for you to review that use and the parking needs associated with it. Um, that might be the, you know, the, uh, the, the best way of doing that. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of an alternative way to provide protection, um, uh, but that's probably the, the best way of doing it. If you have a concern that we're going to propose a use that's going to overreach our parking. I mean, mm -hmm. secondly, obviously, if we create a parking issue, that's subject to uh, enforcement um, because we can't overburden the, the parking you know, that's available to us. But I, I think Mr. Scalba would be perfectly fine with having you review the, the final tenant use to make sure that it's consistent with your concerns regarding parking. That is what, kind of what I had in mind. I just 
prefer to have you suggest it. Yes, sir. David, other questions at the moment? Um, or comments? No, I mean, I, you know, I've looked over the new plans. I, I did notice, I guess we're, we're going to move on to this soon, um, the difference in the build out. Um, but I think a lot of the issues that I was most concerned about, the drainage, um, the impervious surfaces, the lighting, all of those things, I think you've done a very, very good job addressing. So at this point, I don't think I have any more questions. Okay. How about other members of the board? We've all had this material for a week or so, I think. Oh, nothing from you, Charlie? Matt? No, I don't think, um, I don't think I'm pretty clear on like, you know, I did notice the modifications um, in support of the um, ADA compliance piece of it, but I think I'm pretty clear on, um, I was just looking at, I was gonna ask Jeff to maybe run us through that, but I think, I think I'm pretty clear if everybody else follows that well, I'm, I'm good with it. Mike, how about you? I'm good, thanks. Okay, Lee. Lee's Lee recused. Lee's recused. What? Oh, she's Lee, recused? Yes, she's recused. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I should have announced that up front. <clears throat> I don't have any questions. I think, I think mine were uh, basically... Dave's and I think the proposed solution of deal with dealing with real um, tenant uh, examples is a lot better, safer for both parties than to try to uh, define a low intensity tenant versus a high intensity tenant, which if we're lucky would be batting about 500 in terms of accuracy. I mean, I just, you know, that's just fraught with, with trouble. Yeah, and that's the big issue, as we all know. I mean, this is a, you know, smack dab in a residential district right across the street from a, from a church. Um, the other issue um, is that um, we'd like to monitor the situation so that tenants or, or commercial um, uh, tenants, for that matter, are not using St. Anthony's parking lot. Um, I think we all know, John and others, that you know when there when there are uh, memorial services and and uh, key key Sundays and things. I mean that that lot, big as it is, fills right up and spills out onto the street. So I, I think it behooves everybody to have a good neighbor that you know a good neighborly relationship. And I don't know, Dave, if we could do more than simply make a note of that or Adam, but um, I'm not expecting the worst. It's just that, you know, we would get some, certainly get blowback if, if uh, people were using the, using the parking lot at the expense of uh, parishioners or attendees. Yeah, I don't, I think the only thing that we can do that's within our, our authority is to condition this permit to minimize the possibility that that would be a problem. I mean, we mm -hmm. can't really, we can't put anything in our decision concerning St. Anthony's because it's not. Yeah, I know. It, we, it's, it's more of a, um, a request that uh, as, as tenants come and tenants go, that they be, you know, given a little little pat in the back and, and shown that there is parking on, on this at 147 and they need not go across the street. Uh, Mr. Chittick, this is Adam Brodsky. I'll state the obvious, which is that we have no legal right to use that sure. property, which is private property. I know. I mean, it's, you know, if, 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 if it were used, Adam, I think it'd be more, come out more as a, as an annoyance or, or a, you know, uh, you know, some some un, un, unhappy 
unhappiness rather than a legal issue. So it's just a question of being a good neighbor. And, and of course, you can't stand out there with a sign or, or you know, uh, binoculars and, and check on people. But as long as the um, tendency is such that we're not overloading the available parking at 147, then I think there's no incentive to go across the street, frankly. So I think that all plays in together. I have no other questions. That's just simply an observation. Uh, Jen, are there people? So um, first we do have um, Rob Jeffers. He's the chairman of the Affordable Housing Steering Committee and he did support a letter of support to the development. Um, he's in the audience if you wish him to speak or if you feel a letter is enough, it's up to you. And you can tell me and I can promote him. Um, we also do have um, a member of the audience with their hand raised that wish to speak, which I forgot to do my speech of um, when the audience uh, <laughs> Number members uh, do speak. We asked, you know, this has been on the agenda for now for several months. If um, as long as the information is new um, and not repetitive, um, that's generally what we asked to make it a, a, a streamlined um, public hearing. So, Mr. Chairman, how would you like to proceed? Would you like? Well, to I, if Rob Jeffers has anything different to add to his letter, but his letter was pretty clear from my reading, which is that uh, he and the affordable. Uh, housing committee are, are quite pleased that uh, they, they get one real unit and they get three units to count. And uh, I think I think that does say it all. His endorsement is is simple but effective. He uh, he agrees. That's the gist. So uh, he did type that into the chat um, that that is the gist. Um, Mr. Chairman, I. Before we, we move too far on, I'd like to talk about the redesign features in the latest plan as well. I did have a couple questions on but that. Let's do that now and then we'll open it up to the audience since they may wish to build on, on your comments. Go ahead, Dave. Okay. Um, I noticed that, well, in bringing in this ADA compliance stuff that you ended up adding bedrooms on the third floor and there was nothing on the third floor earlier, um, which seems to have resulted in slightly more usable floor space in each of the units. Um, I guess my question is, is there any exterior change um, to the roof line or to the height or anything with the change to using parts of the third floor? This is Pat Fisher, the architect. Mm -hmm. And yes, in order to make the third floor work properly to code, we did add some small dormers to the roof. Um, if you look on sheet um, A2.1, if you look up at the roof, you'll see a couple of small dormers up there. <clears throat> and that allows us to have a bedroom and a bathroom on the third floor. Uh, okay. On the previous design, we had two bedrooms on the second floor and mm -hmm. an open room on the third floor. So we had to reconfigure that to put a bedroom and a bathroom on the third floor now. Okay. And does that I, I do have that plan available if you'd like me to bring it up. Does that change the height calculation at all? No. No, we just added the dormer into the existing roof line. Oh, I know. But sometimes if we measure to... The dormer oh. instead of the roof, it changes the height. Oh, I see what Even you're saying. The um, change. Yeah, I, I'm not positive on that, but I believe that Dick Rockwood told me that it didn't. Okay. Uh, Adam, are you familiar with that? I believe that Dick testified to the planning board that that did not result in a change in building height as the town measures it. Right. Okay, I see here on the yep. plan it shows it's 22.6 in the midpoint of the main roof and the same to the midpoint of the dormer. So yeah, it doesn't change it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Sure. Yeah, we used to, um, up until about 10 years ago, five years ago, uh, our definition of height uh, specified that it was the midpoint of the highest slope roof, in other words, a dormer. But that, that was removed sometime 
five, six, seven years ago from the definition. So the definition really speaks to the main main roof, if it's a sloped roof, and the midpoint of that main roof. And actually, as I look at A2.1, so was the, were, were those, um, I'll call them balconies removed from the final plan as well? Uh, yeah, I don't believe we have any balconies any longer. Oh, no, no decks. Um, we done the second, no, we do have decks on the second floor. Uh, if you look at, uh, let's see, 2.2, A2.2, you can see on the left side elevation on the left side that you can see the, the wall that encloses the, the deck. <clears throat> They're also shown on the floor plans too. Yeah. Um, I think I know how to do share screen on here. Maybe I'll... I might be able to bring up the plans. Uh, Pat, Jeff has it also has them available if you need him to do it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. Okay, and the left side is the side that faces Spring Street, correct? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Originally, they were fronting uh, South Main Street, right? And they, no, they face, originally, I think they faced the um, residences on the, on the, um, I guess the right side toward the rectory. Yeah, on the, well, I, can, I can clarify that. On the original filing, we had decks that extended beyond the building footprint heading towards the neighbor um, to the right, I'm looking right. at it from the street. Those were eliminated and the decks were incorporated into the footprint. Okay, and they're, they still, are, they're still gone, right? They're gone, yeah. Okay. Um, but there are decks incorporated into the footprint instead. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're very small, narrow decks. They're more like balconies. <clears throat> they're only four feet deep. Yeah. And, they're, and they're only on the left side? No, if you look, um, you know, if, if you can um, yeah. enable um, myself to share, I'll bring it up. But they're basically incorporated into the two dormers on the front. And then there's yeah. one on the, the right side. You should be able to share, Jeff, because you're a panelist. It's not allowing me to. Yeah, I tried to do it too. It wouldn't allow me. Uh, oh, I can see them now on the on A3.2. Yes, three point A3.2. Okay. At the bottom of the plan, you see two decks for those two apartments. And then if you mm -hmm. go to the upper left side, you'll see a deck for that okay. apartment. All right, I just wanted to confirm that there are none facing the immediate neighbors to the right. That's correct. Oh. Okay, other, other observations or comments? We don't have to close it off right now, but I, I will call upon the audience unless uh, the zoning board itself has some questions. Seeing none, Jen, could we promote whomever is in the queue? Absolutely. Um, Jeff, I did fix that. I don't know, for some reason it was off in this uh, meeting, but we'd be able to share going forward. Um, the, the, so it was uh, the Zoom. The other thing, Woody, if I could just mention that Rob Jeffers asked me to add is, um, that they would like to add it, they comply, the, AD, the ADA compliance makes these units very fitting for affordable housing. This allows us to potentially offer to elderly or disabled, disabled vets all very positive. Mm -hmm. um, so he just wanted to add that. And then I'm going to um, promote- That wasn't in his letter, was it? No, no, so no. he just, that was just a comment. Um, be good to know. So I'm gonna promote uh, Michelle Goodson to the panelist and she, she can speak regarding Michelle you're uh, muted oh there you go can you hear me now hello Let's speak up please it's a little bit muted uh, yes can you hear me now hello yep. yes we can okay I think okay I so has anybody discussed or uh, looked into the traffic patterns exiting from this property. 
Uh, I'm very concerned about that amount of cars in and out of a very narrow space. Um, I've never heard that discussed on any of these meetings, so I would be curious to, to see if anybody has looked into the impact of, uh, I mean, we can barely get out of our driveways now with the amount of people racing up and down South Main Street. So I have a lot of concerns about that many cars going in and out of a very narrow space. So that's my first, that's my first new concern. And then I thought the meeting was going to be in person. So I had made up a package of uh, pictures um, regarding the front of the property and parking and the close proximity to my uh, property. So unfortunately I'm gonna have to drop those off um, because I thought tonight was a in-person meeting. So again, just very concerned about the traffic going in and out of that very narrow space um, and how that's going to affect many things with kids driving their, you know, bikes to and from school and the mothers walking their, you know, babies in strollers daily. Um, it's, it's a big concern. I, I do, as you all know, disagree vehemently regarding the amount of cars that were ever on in front of this building. There was never 17 or even seven, but I've already reiterated that, reiterated that several times during these meetings. Um, so yes, and, and then the other thing is the height of the building. I have several pictures uh, prior to the fire and during the fire that I need to submit that shows you um, I just don't know how you're going to get all of these spaces in that small pod. Um, I don't know if any of you have visited this site, walked it, measured it. It seems like it's a very large structure on a what was a very small building, height-wise and width-wise. And I even did a floor plan of what I remember that building to be both inside um, and out. And I just... I just can't wrap my head around three apartments um, now with the third floor. Before it was only going to be two stories. Now we're looking at three stories. Uh, I, I just, I don't know, I, I, I can't wrap my head around why we would allow such a huge structure on 2,700 square feet of cement slab that's currently out there. And a 19 foot wide driveway that exists between Peter's property, this building. I, I just, I, I, I don't know if anybody studied the traffic situation going in and out of this uh, very narrow area. So that's a big concern that we all have in the neighborhood. We've all talked about this and nobody seems to be addressing it. So that's it. Thanks, Adam. Do you want to uh, respond? Oh, I'm happy to, and then I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. I would just point oh, out. Okay, sorry. I mean, either way. No, no, but I was just as, as a as treetops observation, there's not a great deal of traffic coming in and out of this site. Uh, there are not that many parking spaces. All of the parking spaces meet your dimensional requirements. All of your drive aisles meet your, uh, uh, your uh, requirements. Um, and uh, I don't think there are any line of sight issues, but let me turn it over to Jeff, because we did have some discussions with respect to traffic, I believe in connection with the planning board. Jeff? Thanks, Adam. Yeah, I can speak to the, the narrowed driveway entrance. Um, we are narrowing the driveway to the, the standard width of a driveway entrance for a commercial parking lot, which is 24 feet wide. And it has 10 foot radiuses on either side. So that, that is a standard um, entrance. It's actually more safe than uh, because it defines the, the um, entrance and exit. Um, all the parking spaces are the nine and a half by 20, which is are required by the zoning bylaws um, with adequate room to back out and maneuver. And we did do a fire truck turning analysis showing that the, the um, Cohasset fire truck can pull into the site all the way to the back of the parking lot. And that was reviewed and um, approved by Chief Dockery. Okay. Board, any questions regarding uh, parking traffic flow? Dave, anything? Nope. Okay, Jen, is there any, anybody else in the? Um, I, no, there is not. Queue. Okay. Uh, 
All right. We all have the photographs from Michelle. Uh, it's possible that uh, we could close this hearing. It's possible, except for the photos, it's possible to continue the hearing until next month, at which point we would, I think, be prepared to close and review a draft. What's the uh, suggestion on the part of my colleagues on the board? Jen. I just want to mention that that it's closer than we think as well, because it's August 3rd and it's already July 13th. So it's, and I, um, I just wanted to say it, it's you, not you as- You mean, I'm sorry, what's what's the next The next meeting is August 3rd. So we don't have as long in between meetings. Oh, I see. So it's, a, it's by my count, it's one, two, three weeks away. Right. And, and, and I'm- I've, I've drafted kind of a skeleton of the history of the sessions of the hearing, um, but I've not drafted any discussion findings or that sort of thing that the board will need to think about. So I, I, I think it would be better if we continue to August 3rd so I can get material out to everybody so we have a chance to think about it before we deliberate. Okay, I, I think at that point, I see no reason not to close the hearing. And, and, and deliberate. Nor do I. Okay. So I would make a, uh, absent any other comments, I would make a motion to continue this hearing until August 3rd. Do I have a second? Second. All right, moved and seconded. All in favor, Woody Chittick, aye. Dave McMorris, aye. Matt Watkins, aye. Uh, Mike Dickey, aye. And Charlie, you're muted. Charlie Higginson, you're muted. Well, why don't you wave if you are in favor of uh, continuing until August 3rd? I approve. I, I, I. Okay. So five to nothing. It's the board has voted unanimously to continue. Okay, great. Thank you very, very much. much. Thank, Thank you, everyone. everyone. The flexibility. Okay, we, we now go to our, uh, and thanks very much, Adam and, and your team. Um, we now go to uh, 30 Whitehead Road, um, filed by the Bodells. I believe, Jen, we have received a letter from them. That's correct. Um, Mr. Bodell uh, has requested to withdraw the application prior to the board rendering any decision. Um, I did just promote him if you had any questions, but I know essentially he's going to work with John and look uh, for solutions. So. Um, he has submitted that for the record and... Okay, well, why don't we just hear from Mr. Bodell for a sec. Uh, you, uh, do, would you like to, to tell us what, what your current thinking is, at least, uh, in withdrawing? Uh, yeah, so it, um, I think that um, our understanding of specifically of variance um, was uh, not accurate uh, for what, uh, what a hardship was. Um, so based on that, uh, we feel that that probably wasn't going to get approved. Um, the special permit, um, in a previous conversation with, um, John, the building inspector, he had said that he was looking for that, but I, I believe that a conversation has happened between John and maybe you Woody, I'm not sure, um, that that was no longer required. A special permit was no longer required. Um, our Thinking now is, is um, pursuing what was suggested last time since we have a unique situation. We have no, nothing to find us frontage um, and there appears to be other ways to achieve our goals. Um, and I have been told that probably uh, getting any uh, special permit or um, a variance is, is no longer necessary. So with that in mind, um, we've decided to withdraw. Okay. Board, any questions for Mr. Fidel? Any, anybody out there uh, waiting to speak? No, sir. Okay, I would make a motion to um, allow the withdrawal. I would uh, append a statement uh, without prejudice, meaning that if uh, <laughs> circumstances change and you decide you do need um, 
uh, relief, uh, it's perfectly fine for you've already, you know, filed and things. You can come back. I know you don't intend to and hope not to, but uh, you can. Uh, so I'd make a motion to uh, allow uh, the Bodells to withdraw without prejudice. I second that motion. Okay, Charlie's seconded. Woody Chittick, aye. Lee Darst, aye. Dave McMorris, aye. Uh, Michael, Michael Dickey, aye. aye. Matt Watkins, I okay, and so we got all six. Okay, Dave, did you? I did. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so that's six zero. Uh, they're withdrawing without prejudice. Okay. Next up is eleven Jerusalem Road, um, filed by Jonathan Palmstrom of JNP Contracting to uh, construct an addition within the setback um, and seeking special permit relief under Section eight point seven. So I guess we will turn it over to Mr. Palmstrom. And perhaps you can update us. Uh, it's been five weeks. Or, no, it, yeah, it's been five weeks or so since the board has met. So um, please update us with, uh, summarize. Uh, well, do you have the information in front of you that I submitted? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think you have what, we, what you asked us for at the last meeting. Okay. Now, well, let me just ask Lee Darst. You're you're sort of on the on the drafting on the point here. Um, I believe, right? You've got a little. Yes, I drafted the decision and. Right. So, what lawyer. what uh, questions or or comments do you wish to make to do you have of Mr. Palmstrom? If any? Um, well, at the last meeting, we requested an updated site plan to show uh, the closest neighbors uh, how far they were, and they supplied that. And we also asked for uh, the, the percentages of the increases, um, and they submitted updated floor plans, and um, Matt had asked for, for an updated drawing with the height, and they've submitted that. So they've answered the, uh, they did submit and respond to all the board's questions with all the increased square footage, um, all the um, all the areas with uh, the existing in the setbacks, the proposed in the setbacks with the exact square footage and the percentage increases. So I don't have any questions. The information that they submitted answered on all the outstanding questions that I had. Good, good. Board, how about questions of Mr. Palmstrom? I'm not seeing much. Does anybody have any questions? Or I mean, we all got the materials, so I presume we've all looked at it. Okay. Um, I can wait a couple of seconds to see if anything comes to mind, but Jen, is there a raised hand there? There is not. Okay. Actually, I was just double checking the plan. You said, Lee, you confirmed the heights on here, right? Uh, well, you had requested the heights and there, the, the I believe the, well, they did the setback. Um, they did, actually they didn't. They had said that they had, were not increasing the height um, any higher than the 28 feet that it was already in height. They said that the new addition would not exceed that. Um, they did provide the portion with the roof um, that shows the portions in the setback. But no, they um, they didn't put in the drawing exactly. Well, in the original. Well, with the revised plan, I, I think it's critical that we um, we can close the hearing at you know uh, this evening. But I think it's critical that they submit uh, a completed. Uh, plan with the elevations. Yeah, I, I think so that we'll have it on file. The weight of south elevation. 
Mr. Palmstrom, is, is that is that uh, kind of a correct assessment that the yes, the elevation that we can provide that dimension on the finished plan. But you know, just to, to everybody's point, that the the drawing shows that the the new addition does not exceed the existing roof height. Right, but I'd like the data also to be on the plan, so that what's on file is. is is Absolutely. attached to our decision. Absolutely, we can we can make sure. I don't sure know what a on... finished plan is. I mean, you, you could be talking about a an as built plan um, six months well, down the road. I, I I think we should we should provide it to you on the uh, the permitted plan. Yeah, you could you could do that this week. I mean, that's not a yeah, not, not a big deal. Okay. Anyone else? Lee, do you think we're in a, at a point where we could close this hearing? Um, uh, yes, I do. Anybody in the board have concerns about closing at this point? No. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing on 11 Jerusalem Road. I second the motion. Moved and seconded. All in favor, Woody Chittakai. Lee Darstai. Charles Higgins and I. Dave McMorris, I. Michael Dickey, I. Okay. The hearing is closed. Uh, with the exception of, of uh, elevation data that will be submitted, I trust, this week on, on um, permit plans. Will do. <laughs> okay. Our next hearing is an appeal. Uh, at 488 Jerusalem Road, filed by Joe Brenner Michael uh, on behalf of uh, the Wyndhams, who are neighbors at 482 Jerusalem. And the appeal is the building inspector's issuance of a building permit for the foundation under the front porch, basement footings, front deck, and kitchen room. So with that, I will turn it over. I'm just going to disappear for about 15 seconds so I can um, print out something, but uh, continue. I can be. Good evening, members of the board. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yep. Excellent. Um, my name is Jill Brenner Mikesell. I represent John and Tracy Windham of 482 Jerusalem Road. Um, as you know, this matter involves the Windham's appeal of the building commissioner's issuance of a building permit on March 23rd, 2021 for the construction of a foundation under the front porch, the basement footings, front deck and kitchen room. As we've discussed at prior hearings, Mr. Stasco was first required to seek zoning relief here for several reasons. It's our position, obviously, that the building permit um, should be reversed and to the extent um, Mr. Stasco seeks to have this work to, to, to keep this work, um, he should be required to apply for a special permit. First, zoning relief was required by this board's two prior orders. The first decision of this board was the 2018 special permit which was issued. In that special permit, the board explicitly provided that any changes other than minor field changes must also be submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals to ensure compliance with that decision. Secondly, recently in January of 2021, this board issued another series of opinions in which, in which decisions um, you all required Mr. Stasco to return to the board to seek zoning relief for portions of the property that he had constructed, um, despite the fact that they were um, not, not permitted. As you know, Mr. Stasco has sought permission for some of that work, and there's a special permit hearing that will follow this one to address that. Thirdly, the construction associated with this foundation work is within the front setback and thus requires zoning approval. And I'm going to discuss that in a moment. And fourth, and we also addressed this last time, the impact of, of grading is very unclear um, here. And for that reason, the building permit should also be denied. It's clear that additional grading, substantial additional grading work was done once Mr. Stasco commenced this work. 
that greeting substantially impacted the height, but we just don't know how it impacted the height because we haven't seen an existing conditions plan or a proposed conditions plan. But we can tell visually that there's a, a distinct difference between um, the grading prior to this construction and the grading after. Do I have um, screen share? Can I screen share? Let's see. As Good. Okay, thank you. As you all know, I um, submitted a few days ago um, a, a letter with a few exhibits and I'm gonna screen share um, a couple of those exhibits um, to, to highlight the issue with the front setback. Can I just interject here? Of course. It wasn't a few days ago that you submitted that. We got it yesterday. I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not, wait a second, I'm trying to get my screen correct here. I'm not trying to be misleading. I, I apologize. Well, that's not the point. The point is you submitted an awful lot of material for us to review the day before our meeting. And I know we've discussed this before at several of these other sessions that we need the stuff at least a week ahead so that we have a chance to look at it, read it, think about it, instead of you know having to run it out to us now and we haven't, none of us has really has a chance to sit down and look at the prior stuff, try to fit things together and figure out what's going on. I know Woody spent some time at it but I haven't even had time to look at your letter. And I, I don't understand why this continues to be a problem. Yeah, I could give somebody, an applicant, a pass if they, uh, you know, once on a continued hearing, but as a pattern of behavior, knowing what our policy is seven days in advance of a hearing and have it uh, rather routinely flouted um, <laughs> inclines me not to pay a lot of attention to last minute submissions. If I may, um, I haven't submitted, actually, I don't think since I filed this appeal, I've submitted any documentation. So um, I apologize if I've submitted it late. My, again, my intention is not to be submitting it late to put you guys in a tough spot. That's not my, my, my goal here. My goal here is to get you information. And again, the, the information I submitted really relates to the building permit appeal, but also to the special permit appeal. And, and for, Frankly, a lot of this, most of this information should have been submitted by the special permit applicant. Um, the Wyndhams are, from my standpoint, doing the work that the applicant, I, I understand I'm the applicant on this, I am the applicant on this building permit appeal. But with respect to the special permit, my client shouldn't be having to do the work that Mr. Stasko should be doing. We, we want to do it because we want to highlight areas that have not been otherwise explicitly highlighted. So again, I apologize. My my goal is absolutely not to put you guys in a tough spot or to to um, you know be difficult. I think this information is incredibly important. Um, we prepared it carefully, and I would hope that you would consider it. Um, and again, I take your point. I apologize, um, but I do I do think, and this isn't an excuse, but I do truly believe that this information is information that. Mr. Stasco should have provided to you. This has been this has been a pattern in all of these these matters where my client has been doing a lot of work that Mr. Stasco and his engineer should be doing. Again, not to make an excuse, but it is it is a problem um, because we want to provide you with accurate information so that you make the best decision. Okay. Well, why don't you continue on with the appeal only as opposed to the special permit? The, these are are bifurcated. That's, that's fine. Some of the issues are overlapping, but when I get to sure, the special permit part, part, I won't, I won't repeat myself. Um, I'm going to screen share. One moment. Okay. So this document that I have here is exhibit one in my submission. And this relates to the front setback issue that I want to highlight. Mr. Stasco has taken the position that the front setback is 18.2 feet. It is our position that the front setback is actually 21.45 feet. And the reason for this differential is that the measurement from Two Linden Drive, which is the abutter, should be from the dwelling and not from the open porch. If you look at note three of the table of area regulations, it states, that the average is calculated, quote, as the average of the setbacks of the dwelling, dwellings or other main buildings nearest thereto. 
it is our position that the dwelling is the structure and not the open porch. This really matters with respect to this building. It matters with respect to everything. It matters with respect to this appeal because to the extent that we are correct, it takes this foundation, which I'm gonna just jump over to exhibit two, this foundation, much of this goes to the special permit part, but this red, red highlighted foundation here, uh, which is the subject of the, the building permit, it takes it within the front setback. And it's our position that if it's in the front setback, Mr. Sasko needed to get zoning relief through a special permit from all of you. And he didn't do that. Again, we take the position that the measurement should be from the dwelling, not from the open porch. I understand that Mr. Stasico did that because it gives him a more favorable measurement. And we believe that that measurement is incorrect. Um, the intensification of this nonconformity was never authorized by this board and it simply should not be allowed. Um, and I just wanna show you One second. This is the present, this is the area that we're talking about here. And this is what the house presently looks like. Um, I, don't, I don't know exactly when this picture was taken, but it was taken in the last two months. Um, I'm gonna show you a picture, one moment. I apologize. Well, you can actually see it here. In this picture, which was from, I believe 2013, you can see the front of the house and you can see here how drastically the grading, well, A, the grading has changed, but B, you see the area within the setback. Um, just sort of moving on, I know I, I jumped ahead with the grading issue. Um, we talked about this at the last hearing. The grading that was used by Mr. Stasco was from 2009. Once he began construction or before he began construction, the grade of this structure was unequivocally changed. Again, the photo I just showed you, you can see clearly how much the grading of the structure has changed. And if exhibit one, the second page, I include both of those photographs or similar photographs. So you can see them side to side and you can see how, how substantial the grading changes are. And this could impact the height of the structure. We don't know because there's no plan that has been submitted by Mr. Stasco showing what the grading is. Um, but it's our position that the, the grading, in addition to the, the fact that the front of the structure is clearly within the 21.45 setback, um, is significantly problematic. For all of these reasons, again, just to summarize, number one, the original plan that was submitted and approved in 2018 did not include this work in the front of the structure. This is, this is the plan from 2018 that was approved. Um, and you can see this part here, the grading was not was not there and the intrusion into the front setback was not there. This is what was approved. And this is what we have now. Um, secondly, the decision that you all issued in 2021 required Mr. Stasco to seek zoning relief um, for this work and he failed to do so instead applying for a building permit. Number three, as I just showed you, the average setback is 21.45 feet. Um, and I'll just, just highlighting exhibit one, Again, you can see on here in pink, the 18.2 average front setback line. And then in red, you can see the 21.45 average front setback line. And you can see how much further into the building, into the porch and impacting the, the basement area um, where substantial work was done. Um, it goes with the 21.45. And finally, the issues that I just highlighted regarding grading. Um, for all of these reasons, it's our position that it was not appropriate for Mr. Stasco to apply for a building permit or for the building commissioner to grant the building permit. 
And for that reason, the building permit should be reversed and Mr. Stasco should be required to return to the board and seek a special permit um, for this work. Thank you. That's all I have on the building permit appeal. Okay, Jeff, do you have any? Uh, not Jeff, I'm sorry, Matt. Any questions? No. Um, I mean, I guess, you know, without, I don't have any questions of, of Jill um, or any kind of pieces that I think are missing. I think, um, you know, I, Jeff, if you have anything to add, um, well, I, I, I do have a, have a question, though, and, and that is that you kind of said that there was no, no grading plan, no, no uh, plan other than uh, some sort of serve, land survey done in 2009. But this board, did it not, except in 2017 when the first hearing opened, a, a certified site plan which showed grade and topography? So, so it isn't that this that nothing was submitted. We we accepted adopted that as a as a premise uh, upon which we then evaluated um, what was supposed to have been uh, a smaller, admittedly a, a smaller um, project than than it turned out to be. But still, my response to that was is that construction started on this on this project about a year ago, and it's problematic for the, the, the landowner to change the grade after that, that is submitted, years after that is submitted, and for that potentially to create another nonconformity with respect to height. And then you're proceeding with a nonconformity that never came before the board. And I would also direct your attention to, um, it's a document that the foundation plan that was submitted by Mr. Stasco. And in that foundation, and actually I can pull it up if you want, if that would be helpful, one second. One sec, let me just pull it up. This is, um, let me just show you. This is a foundation plan that was submitted by Mr. Stasco. This is page S1 and it's very small. So I'm gonna enlarge it because my eyes aren't that good. But if you look at um, number four on the general notes, it says contractor to, and actually let me back up. Let me tell you what year this is because that would be helpful. This is 2019, it says in note four right here, contractor to verify existing grades prior to construction to determine final wall and slab slab elevations, consult with professional engineer. And then if we look at number five, it says contractor to maintain grades as existing prior to construction. And that did not happen. Um, and so I think perhaps this creates, I'm not sure if it's a unique issue or not, but it's highly problematic for somebody to change the grades after a plan is submitted to the board, potentially creating an additional nonconformity with respect to height and perhaps other things as well. Um, okay. Um, we, we can and probably will come back, uh, Joel, to you, but at this point, does the board have any uh, questions for Jill, or should we turn it over to the uh, to uh, Attorney Delisi for a, a yeah? Because I conference. think the appeal piece is mostly rooted in the um, in the front setback issue, right? So if anybody has any questions about the, you know, well, yeah, and that, and that comes the down to the setback. is a wraparound porch part yeah. of or not part of. Um, right. A building. Yeah. Which we could deliberate on, but I don't know if anybody has any general yeah. questions or not. But Jeff, would you like to uh, step in and, and give us your point of view on that on that issue and anything else that you've heard or might wish to impart? Thank you. Uh, Jeff Delisi representing Ryan Stasco. Ryan's here today. On the average uh, setback, um, item three behind your table of area uh, regulations indicates that an exception from setback requirements may be made, uh, which, which exception would represent the quote, average of the setbacks of the dwellings 
four other main buildings from the street. Um, Jill has Jill has taken the position that um, the building and not the porch is 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 what matters. Um, uh, excuse me, that the dwelling uh, and not the porch is what matters. Uh, but she ignores the language of uh, of the exception when it says or other main buildings. And the reason why that's important is the word dwelling is not defined in the zoning bylaw. Uh, but the but the word building is defined in the zoning bylaw. Um, so when it says dwellings or other main buildings, we can look to the definition of building. And when we look to the definition of building, what we see is that it states it is defined as any structure or portion thereof having a roof or other covering forming a structure for the shelter of persons, animals, or property. When you look at the definition of the re of required yard, or it's it's actually it's set forth in yard comma required in the bylaw, it indicates that you're to measure the required yard between the building and the road. Okay, so in this case, number two, Linden Drive, and I have to step back. Jill, uh, in her submittal and in her statement today, calls it an open porch. Um, that's misleading because the porch might be open on the sides, but it's covered by a roof, which provides shelter. And so to Linden Drive is what is at issue here. It's covered with the roof. Um, per the definition, that's a portion of the building and the setback calculation um, does not e exclude porches. Um, and so in this case, I think that the applicant is correct as was verified by um, the building inspector that the uh, average setback is 18.2 feet measured to uh, the closest point of the covered porch portion of the dwelling to, um, to the road. Um, so that's my statement there. Um, and um, there was uh, some uh, alluding to it, um, uh, but there wasn't uh, much verbiage on the issue that was raised in the submittal concerning the stairs and the porches in the front of the building. Um, the porches were shown, uh, on the, the portion of the building that was part of the um, reconstruction under section 8.9, not the addition, that porch existed prior and was rebuilt. And that's confirmed on both plans prior and rebuilt. Um, the porch shown in the addition um, was approved by you in 2018. Um, and that's shown on the plan and on the as-built plan. So the porches existed, the stairs, um, the stairs also existed. Um, if you, I think definitionally it's important to, to take a look at that as well, because in the definition um, of required yard, it, again, it references buildings um, and that does not include something that's not covered. And so the, the stairs were not covered. And so um, the word building includes a structure having a roof and the permitted projections are permitted projections from buildings. And so um, I think that the permitted projections portion of your bylaw applies to in, um, um, covered but unenclosed entry porches, steps and bulkheads. So um, I, I don't think that the argument there was relevant. On the issue of average grade, I just wanted to point out that your definition of height requires um, the calculation to be taken from the mean level of the pre-construction ground. We've been over this. Um, Whitty, you pointed out what I was about to say, which is that 
it was uh, the, the methodology was determined and confirmed by the building inspector in 2017 and a note to that effect appears on the 2017 plan and then was turned around and accepted by this board and became final. That grade, I think was determined to be elevation 40, was used to measure the height of the building in 2021 in order to determine what portion of the building was higher than, uh, within the non-conforming setback area, was higher than what had been there. Um, there was a stormwater permit which allowed grade changes. So. Um, in addition, Jill has some colored elevations. I just wanted to point out, again, the orange on those colored elevations are portions of the building that are, that are between 21 feet and 18.2 feet. That's not applicable here. It's 18.2 feet. Um, it shows more massing within the setback as a result, but that's not real. And then with respect to the setback lines, um, a lot of the blue and in the green, I think that you see in, in her elevations, um, those, those don't take into account the pre-existing house. So she's coloring in an area saying that we're, we're this much of the building is in the non-conforming setback, but she's failing to realize that we were building within our foundation, which is allowed under the bylaw. And so what our massing and volume colored elevations and our calculations were based on was that portion of the non-conforming increase in height um, within the non-conforming area um, uh, above what was existing right? Because you, you, you discount what's existing. So we, 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 we rebuilt the house within the same footprint. Um, the, uh, I just wanted to point out that substantial detriment, she tries to, um, or she references it. Uh, again, um, in a zoning appeal, she has to demonstrate that, she's, that, that her client is aggrieved. And the only thing that is pointed to with, uh, with respect to aggrievement and substantial detriment to the neighborhood is the height of the roof. There's nothing in, in the correspondence or in the presentation that indicates any aggrievement um, along, you know, for anything other than height. Uh, and those are the bulk of the matters which I heard this evening. And um, so I don't think it's demonstrated and um, you know, we provided facade volume calculations by registered architect. Our plans by Merrill are stamped by an engineer. The plans uh, as, as part of exhibit A that were just shown on the screen are sketch plans. They're not stamped. Um, they are um, an alteration of our plans. Um, and so um, our approved, uh, our, our Alternative design, which I alluded to in the last meeting, is an alternative design that probably has um, more impact on the Wyndhams, but doesn't require a special permit. Um, and so I think that all in all, <coughs> our changes uh, within the non-conforming setback and increases within the non-conforming setback are um, within a range that the board would typically, I think, approve. Um, uh, but I, I would argue are fairly minimal. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say. Can I just interject for a second? Did we move on to the special? I assume, Jeff, that you were just addressing both appeals? I, I really uh, want to uh, deal with the appeal. We're either going to hear, hear all there is to hear on it or we're going to continue it. I, just to be clear, I didn't address the, my special permit argument. I was solely addressing, addressing my appeal. Right, I understand. There are other issues of non-conformities which are not, which are relevant to the special permit. I, I will repeat myself in the next hearing. So I basically said what I need to say. Okay. Um, so why don't you summarize the, the uh, 
what what you're seeking from uh, during the the appeal uh you would like a uh in in essence what a new filing of everything that's been constructed and is proposed to be constructed or not i'm a little bit so unclear sure building commissioner hallen issued a building permit for a foundation under a second let me get the exact language a foundation under front porch, the basement footings, front deck, and kitchen room. Okay. That is the portion, that's what we're appealing. We're appealing his issuance of the building permit on that specifically. The special permit deals with the other issues that we have in play. So what I'm asking this board, I think it's inappropriate that the building commissioner, or incorrect, I should say, that the building commissioner granted this building permit prior to Mr. Stasco seeking zoning relief from this board, as this board had indicated that he should. So what I am seeking is for this board to reverse the issuance of the building permit, such that Mr. Stasco can't continue constructing in that area, he needs to stop. And he should do what he should have done in the first place, which is to apply for a special permit and seek the required zoning relief with respect to that portion, the foundation under the front porch the basement footings, the front deck, and the kitchen room. So I think in summary, you know, the front setback that the building inspector determined, you know, when he issued the permit, your, your, your argument is that that should have been taken to our board to rule on the, you know, even though most of the work has been done within that area, already you you feel strongly that the decision in that area should have been made and you're asking for us to um you know rule against the building inspector and have that permit come in front of us really on the front setback to make a determination if we agreed with it or not is correct Okay. And, and to determine the detriment and whether there's a substantial impact to the neighborhood or to the Wyndhams, et cetera. And again, I wish that this had been done differently. I, I wish it had all been rolled up and brought before you in the special permit proceeding that's next, but it wasn't, and I can't control that. Um, but it, it's my argument that it should have been, that this board told Mr. Sasko on numerous occasions that this should be brought before you. I understand what, what, that. Wait a minute. This board told Mr. Stasco that he had to bring this before us uh, as a special permit? Well, at, so in the 2018 special permit proceeding, in, in the special permit that was issued, issued, the decision indicated that anything other than a minor field change must be brought before you. And that was in 2018. So that was not, that was not brought before you. This was constructed. I think it's clear that this was not a minor field change. Um, so that's number one. And number two, in the decision on um, your decision relating to my um, appeal on the denial of the enforcement order, um, this board indicated that Mr. Stasco should bring all of this and the, the items that he did bring before you in the special permit proceeding um, to be heard, to be heard. I mean- to, to bring before us items that were not permitted uh, had not been permitted. I don't think we intended to have um, all the, all that was was previously permitted uh, to come before us. So you're so just to quote from your decision, you directed quote the building inspector to issue a cease and desist order at 480, 488 Jerusalem Road. The order limits activities to any activities that comply with the 2018 special permit issued by the Zoning Board of Appeal. And then it goes on. It's my position that this, these activities did not comply with the 2018 special permit decision. And therefore, this was required to be brought before you in a special permit appeal or a special permit application and not by virtue of a building permit. Okay, I understand your position. Thank you. Does the board have for the questions of either side on the appeal. Okay, Jenna, anybody in the queue? 
There is no one in the queue. Um, I just wanted to go over process this evening, trying to understand what the board's intent is, just because we are at about 89 days um, within the 100 to file. So and we do don't even have the, the remaining 11 days uh, to go. We have three weeks to go before right. we meet again. So I just wanted to uh, bring that to the board's attention so that because we'd have to be mindful of the time frame. Well, I mean, one question would be to, uh, to the board, do we know enough regarding the appeal to close the hearing tonight? Or do we want to ask for and ask for a continuance? If we don't get it, it's easy to make a vote. But how does the board feel? Do we need more time to digest the information given? Uh, we haven't heard the special permit, but I want to keep that that aside for the moment. The appeal is pretty narrow. It's it's that anything that wasn't permitted explicitly in 2018 but was uh, subject to the building permit of 2019 or 20 or whatever it was, um, should have come before us, didn't, and consequently, you know, we should um, re, 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 uh, um, review that process. I mean, how do you feel, Matt? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like for this appeal, we... I think we have everything that we need. I think the the information that was submitted yesterday might might play into more of the, the special permit and given us an opportunity to review that more thoroughly. But I would think that we could deliberate on the appeal, on the appeal tonight. tonight, you know, and then and then and then, and then would, and I understand would have eleven days to um, have to turn around that. Decision. But that, that shouldn't be a burden. Right. Dave, how do you feel as vice chair, Dave McMorris? He's having some audio issues. He's having audio issues? Audio and video. <laughs> <laughs> He's working on it. I'll ask him to unmute. So maybe go to- um... Well, while we're waiting for him, oh, there you go. Here I am. My computer went dead, so I had to plug in my iPad. I'm in 10 minutes, I'll probably be on my phone. But anyway, um, I think we've heard enough on on the uh, appeal of the building permit. Okay, Charlie? I agree. Going? Mike, Dickie? I think, um, think we should uh, close it. Okay, Lee? I agree with everybody. I think we have enough. All right, I would make a motion to close <laughs> the hearing on the appeal. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor, Woody Chittick, aye. Lee Darst, aye. Matt Walker. Oh, all right. All right. Dave McMorris, aye. Michael Dickey, aye. Okay, 6-0. The hearing is closed on the appeal. We'll now segue to the special permit, um, which is, a, as somebody has said, seems to be the, the bulk of, of yesterday's uh, submission. Mr. Chairman, if I could, just um, Matt, I'm going to make you co-host in case there's any issues, um, because I've been having intermittent connectivity issues as well. So as long as I, I don't have a clue as to what I'm supposed to do as co-host. Oh, oh, I'm not making you co-host. No offense, I'm making Matt Watkins the co-host. Oh, good. Oh, good. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I wouldn't do that to you, Woody. No, um, thanks. Yeah. So. Um, a long evening. <laughs> okay, um, so we now have an application filed uh, filed for a special permit, uh, which is a, a bit of a um, housekeeping is not the the right phrase, but it's it's to um, move beyond the appeal itself. And Jeff, I know you said you weren't going to speak um, on this, but nevertheless, this is your your filing. And so um, if you would like to um, give us a summary, I mean, we've obviously have means of information, but still. You, uh, you can't stop a lawyer from talking, I guess. Um, some of the biggest challenge in my profession is knowing when to shut up, to be honest with you. Um, just in this, in this 
application, um, the summary is basically that um, as a result of the average setback calculation of 8.2 feet, which I just explained, um, we're really focusing our um, our special permit application on the differences between um, what we were allowed to do as of right under the reconstruction and what we did on the one hand, and what we were permitted to do in the um, special permit of 2018, um, and what Bob issued a building permit for us to do, and we subsequently did on that addition. Um, and when you apply the average setback of 18.2 feet, um, none of the addition uh, is, is um, that of, of anything that we've done that's, that's different than what was permitted is, it, it is within the non-conforming setback area. And so under section 8.7a, uh, my position is we're able to do that as of right. So it's not part of the special permit application. Um, it's own, um, so what it comes down to is, is the differences are um, the height within the non-conforming setback beyond what was previously existing on the one hand. And secondly, um, we did a, I, I think we talked about this briefly at the last hearing, a, um, we had proposed to do this, uh, this addition, or uh, we had a permit to do uh, this rear bump out under the, the theory, which Bob, um, which you believe Bob was incorrect on that, that that rear yard was actually a side yard. And so in reliance on the building permit, we, we, poured, we poured the foundation for this little bump out area that was like, I don't know, five and a half feet by like almost 11 feet. Um, and we were gonna build on top of it. Um, and so, as a concession, after listening to uh, Mr. Wyndham's counsel in the prior hearings, uh, we decided that um, it seemed like that bump out, that addition and the construction within it was something that was particularly offensive to, um, to, to the Wyndhams. And so we're, we've proposed to not apply for that relief and we don't, intend to construct it at this time and we wouldn't construct it unless and until the, the board issued um, a special permit to do that. We recognize, you know, we need that. So I, I think that that particular area is a structure in the rear yard. And, um, and so that's something that would not be permitted except under the theory of a, a um, 8.7 B because that rear yard is, is, um, is measured to the edge of the closest point of the building, which is the garage that's like five feet or so. And so under the theory of section 8.7 B, we, we would be seeking special permit relief to just keep that there. We'll probably put it like our, our, trans, our you know, transformer or some kind of utility on it. Um, so essentially it would function as a, as a utility pad. Um, so there's that on the other hand. So those are really the only two areas of the special permit that, um, you know, of the application that we're seeking special permit relief from. Um, I've explained this issue, um, with my comments to, um, Jill's submission yesterday. I don't think the board should be accepting it. I think that it violates your policy. I, I for one, try to not violate your policy. So um, I would, you know, and I don't want to be dragged into having to request a continuance of this hearing in order to give a written submission to something that shouldn't have been submitted in the first place. So um, if the board has any questions, I don't want to rehash what I just stated about that letter, and I don't want to rehash any of the stuff that we talked about at, at the last hearing substantively, I suppose I will just uh, defer to the board and answer any questions. 
Okay, let me turn it over to the board and ask questions. I have had a chance to go through material on both sides. So I think I understand what the arguments each side is making, but please, who has questions of, I, of uh, Attorney DeLisi because he's the filer and then we'll turn to uh, Attorney Mike Mikesley. Dave, you're... Jeff, when you say put a transformer on that pad, do you mean a generator? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, thank you for clarification. I, I was struggling with the word as I was saying it, so um, I came up with the wrong one. <laughs> Both electrical. <laughs> um, I guess there's been so much, so many plans, so much information, so many things that have come through on this that I'm, I'm trying to just get focused on what we're actually talking about for a special permit. And just for the purposes of discussion, I'm going to assume that your setback calculation in the front is correct. So is my understanding based on that, that what we're talking about is the pad in the back um, and the increased height in the setback? It, toward the rear. And that's it. That's that's exactly what, what my position is. Okay. Can you tell me what the total square footage of the additional non-conforming facade is, both in terms of square feet and percentage? Yeah, I, I provided a memo to the board. Let me just pull it up here. Um, I'm sort of overwhelmed with the paper on this. No, I, I, I understand. Um, so it's roughly like four percent, but I just want to—I want to be. I thought it was more like two point nine at one point, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm trying. No, to... I, th I think I thought that was in your letter. I don't have it in front of okay, me. Okay, so um, I think it's probably just easier for me to share my screen so you can see this. It's part of the submittal package. Um, just so, so we know we have lost David again, so we're just going to give him a minute. Okay. Uh, but if you could share, and then it'll be here for him. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> he did say it was going to be his cell phone soon enough. Um, can you see? Yep. Okay. Um, so the right part of my screen, uh, Axiom. So is David back? Mm. Uh, I'll, wait. I'll wait since he asked yeah. the question. Oh, hey, Jeff. Ryan, since you're there, do I have the yep. correct document? Yeah, no, yeah, I, 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 I'm back. I'm having to do two right here, but I can uh, share and I can bring it up and show. That if, document uh, was before, yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. before the uh, discovery of the... Uh, can, can I, uh, Jeff, if you leave sharing, I can, I can come in and share. Okay, sure, absolutely. Oh, that, 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 that was it right there, though. All right. Yep, and go to the second page, right yeah. there. So oh, David, look at the bottom, 2.9%. I remembered. Yeah, Woody, <laughs> you're, you're, you're sharper than I am. Um, uh, David, can you hear us? I don't see you. Oh, there, there you are. Laughing, but we can't hear you laugh. <laughs> So as you fiddle with that. I, I think I'm back online fully now. We okay. can hear you. I was kidding about going to my phone, but here I am on my phone. <laughs> um, I hope there's another backup. Um, so basically to answer okay. your question is we did the area and volume calcs. The volume increase is 2.9% as Woody recalled at three point, I'm sorry, 302 cubic feet of an increase. And then, um, on the area, um, what top part it? facade area right there, yeah, 80, 86 yeah. square feet and four percent increase in the setback. Yep, 
There it is. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I fumbled with all that. I, I also think uh, two other points sort of jump out at me. The, um, much of what's circled in blue here um, was an existing porch, uh, correct? Uh, it's been added to. Oh, yes. Yeah, you could is... probably consider the one addition to that porch as an extension of a, even if you wanted to argue that the non-conforming 18 point two line goes through it. It's an extension of a of a pre-existing non-conformity. It's not the creation, I don't think, of anything new or or an exacerbation, intensification. It's simply an extension, I think. Yeah, it's certainly not any any anything new. Um, let me see if I could okay. So what you could see here is the 2017 approved plan, all right, um, on one side. And on the other side, you can see the June 1st, 2021 as-built plan with the um, average uh, of 18.2 feet off the street. And what, what this is in red is the covered porch. Um, but the entire addition basically goes to the line that goes between the O and the U and the word foundation. So this entire area is brand new and was permitted along. Um, and this here was permitted as like a, um, a pergola, uh, I think. I could be wrong. Actually, maybe it's just, I can't remember exactly what it was permitted for, but it's irrelevant for purposes of this conversation. So what you see here that was pre-existing is a porch and you see this little area here. Um, I, that area is subsumed into this drawing and that is, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, that is another little enclosed porch that is just somehow makes architectural sense. Am I right about that? Yeah, no, and, and it was, in, and that covered porch was actually shown in the 2017 uh, approved ZBA plans too. Right, um, that Axiom did, and they're, they're yep. attached to Jill's, um, yep. as Jill's exhibit uh, four, I think, the second and the fourth sheets, you can see it. Also, that was pre-existing were these steps. They were, um, they're not covered and they were rebuilt um, um, and they're not shown here because they're not part of the building for purposes of calculating setbacks. I, I'm speculating that that's not, that that's why he didn't show them. Well, they, actually they, they, they weren't there. They would, they would be right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, and then there's this porch that is a proposed porch in the addition um, that is within the interior of the building on this area here. And I don't know why I started talking about this. Somebody must have asked me a question, but that I think what you were just noting because you saw it on my screen. Yeah, I, I think the, the, the issue is, is uh, we, we've talked about two, two non-conformities that are going to need some sort of relief. Um, which is that slab and the three percent or whatever it may be of the uh, roof, right? We are roof that's that's uh, in a setback, but um, other kinds of setback violations. If if we accept the argument that the setback is eighteen and not twenty one feet, and so for the purpose of discussion, I, I would you know hypothesize that we haven't deliberated, but. If it's 18 feet, the stairs don't really count. A uh, projected, a permitted projection, I'd like to hear from Jill, who made a uh, sort of an issue in that. A, a permitted projection is permitted by right. It's not, it doesn't require a special permit relief from this board. If it, if it, if it is the, uh, you know, not within six feet of the property line and uh, so on and so forth. What, what I think the issue was, Woody, was that it, it um, the rebuilt steps were higher than the height. That, than the four feet or higher than they've been? In the permitted projections. And my point on that is that 
is that those steps are not even a subject of the permitted projections definition because the permitted projections are projections of a, uh, that are a portion of a building and the word building requires them to be covered and so while your while your definition says unenclosed it doesn't it 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 means the portion of the stairs that are covered which are unenclosed has to be you know no more than six feet or whatever and then the height thing so all i'm saying is is that under your definitions this is essentially a deck um and the decks are permitted to extend to the property line under my understanding um i think that's consistent with what i understood kevin arrow consulting to have done in the past as well so um, that's all, that's that's my point there, and I want to make sure that the board understands my argument on average setback, and the fact that um, that porch at Two Linden is covered. It's it it's called open by Jill, but it's covered. It's part of the building as a result of the fact that it's covered, and therefore we take the measurement to that because it is a principal building. And the words principal building or dwelling are where the measurement is to be taken from. Okay. I know I, I, know I got off topic, but. Okay, so we know the relief that you're applying for. Um, and, and I think you'd already talked about uh, the rear yard setback of the bump out slab isn't as as intrusive as the five foot setback of the garage, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I think we understand, I hope we understand that issue. Should we turn it over to uh, attorney Meixel uh, for her to um, maybe rebut your arguments, but um, briefly? But before we do, I just wanna ask one question. Sure. That is, do you care for me for purposes of this discussion, even though it's in your information packet and you have so much information in there, do you want to see what my what our colored plan showed is the amount of the roof in the non-conforming area that's the subject of the application? Or- um, Let me know, ask the board. Does it matter? Uh, does, who in the board has a point of view in this one, Matt? I'm just going down my my visual uh, screens here. Yeah, I would think if you could pull that up, Jeff, because one of the things I was going to ask about is, um, I know you've explained, you know, what the alternative would be as well if, you know, if that configuration had to change. And I think that was based, I, the only, we talked about height last time and, you know, if it was to go that way, talked about the 5% of the roof area, et cetera. So I think this, this is helpful to see again. Okay. So, um, so the yellow uh, coloring on the plan is the portion of the building that's within the non with, that's within the non-conforming setback area. So here you can see the setback lines. Okay. The dash line. And the building was rebuilt within its foundation, which was, which, which, which was here, okay, all along that. So, so the yellow is what pre-existed within non-conforming setback and which was rebuilt. Then um, this is the first floor. Um, Jeff, Jeff. Yeah. Yep. Can I stop you one second? We uh, we're showing them um, the uh, the old uh, front setback when we we're taking seven point nine, not the uh, the eighteen point two, right there. But it doesn't. I, it, does it matter for okay. this? Because no, it doesn't. It's just the blue. Yeah, I just yeah. you know yeah. Okay. okay. So so here we're showing this blue area as being the area that is. That was, that was not previously existing, that was built within the non-conforming setback area. And it was built because um, um, 
to, to match the height of the portion of the building over here that, that, you, that you approved. Um, it, 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 I, I've admitted this, is, is it, should not, it should not have been done absent a special permit. Um, and that's my conclusion and, and it was something that I was pulled into. I didn't, I didn't realize was occurring. So then we have this here, which is also that, that small portion that represents the calculation. So that's pretty much it. Um, Ryan, if you think I pulled up the wrong plan, uh, tell me, Tell me now. This is the this is the no. this is the angle from the side yard, the Wyndham side yard, which is yeah. behind the house. No, the the, the two plans, like the the eighteen point two front setback and the uh, the seven point six, I think they were showing here. It doesn't increase um, any of the non-conforming. It the eighteen point two just made it have uh, more existing non-conforming area than what was originally there but it doesn't change like the uh the you know proposed non-conforming area uh, and volume does not change with regards to the setbacks between the 18.2 and the 7 uh 7.6 because the change of the roof um was outside of both of those right okay <laughs> All right, uh, Jill, uh, I went. Any other further questions at this moment of uh, Attorney DeLisi and or Mr. Stasco on the part of the board? We've heard their um, point of view and argument. Um, Jill, I'd turn it over to you for a brief rebuttal. Thank you very much. And I just before, I don't want to forget, um, my client, John Wyndham, may want to speak when I'm done. And sure, so okay. I just wanted to flag that now um, so that uh, Jen can promote him um, when I'm done. So a number of issues have come up that I'm going to address in my presentation. Um, as I reiterated earlier and at earlier hearings, it's the Wyndham's position that the special permit should be denied for a whole, whole bunch of reasons. Um, reason number one, um, the special permit application understates the scope um, and extent of the nonconformities. And I'm gonna get, get to that and go over my exhibit two with you. Um, number two, um, Mr. Statsko fails to provide all pertinent information which will allow you, the board, to determine the extent of um, the nonconformities. Um, third, for those nonconformities that are identified, like the roof area that Mr. Delisi just addressed, um, those areas are substantially detrimental to the Wyndhams um, and to the neighborhood. I'm gonna screen share again. Um, one second. Okay, so first, I know we sort of went back and forth in that and I stand firm in my position that the average front setback should be measured from the dwelling or main building, which is not the porch of Two Linden Drive. Right, we understand that's for you, that's one point where you and Attorney DeLisi part ways. Agreed, I just, it, I wanted to just highlight it in this proceeding. Okay. Um, second, I wanna go to, I guess this is exhibit two of my, um, submission. And I want to go through this with you because I think it, it highlights a number of important items. Just so you know, for coloring, if it's not clear, as I addressed earlier, the red are areas that are additionally within the 21.45 foot setback. The area in blue on the stairs and the greenish area are areas that it's our position. Those are all within, even if Mr. Stasco is correct, and 18.2 is the magic number. Those areas all fall within the 18.2 foot front setback and rear and the rear setback. And those areas were not highlighted um, by Mr. Stasco. And again, as I think you know, um, this, this drawing was completed by Kavanaugh Consulting um, who looked at and evaluated. Um, you know, I just have a question for you. Uh, I admit it's new construction, but is it is it a reconstruction 
of, of uh, a prior nonconformity? In other words, is it, so, is it creating a new nonconformity or is it simply reconstructing an exist pre-existing nonconformity? So it's creating a new nonconformity with respect to the roof areas that are um, highlighted on the right-hand side. Um, so those areas are nonconforming because the roof was raised within the front setback. Can you all see, I don't know, can you see the, can you see the whole document here? Yep. So, so these, the blue bubbles um, show the unauthorized portions of the roof that were raised within either the rear or the front setback. Those are additional new nonconformities. Those were not there before. The roof was raised. And again, you, I'm not gonna show you pictures again because I know you've seen them, but the roof is substantially higher, which we all admit. And it's not just this corner, it's all of this area that's green um, where the roof was raised within certain setbacks. And again, I don't know why these weren't highlighted in the first place. I don't know why Kavanara Consulting and Mr. Stasco are, are coming up with different different areas and different nonconformities, but I think this is critical. I mean, this is this is a fairly substantial portion of this roof area that it's our position falls within um, the front setback, even under the, the 18.2 number. Um, and so this little sliver here, which is very important to us not be allowed, is, is the nonconformities are significantly more substantial than what Mr. Um, Stasco highlighted. Um, the same holds true for this front area, the new enclosed porch. That was not previously approved. That's unauthorized. It's within the setback. It's now enclosed. Um, so that's another area. I believe that uh, Mr. McMorris, you had asked uh, Mr. Delissi at the outset, what areas are we talking, what are we talking about here? And so what Mr. Delissi and what I'm talking about are two different things. In addition to this carved out area on the front, we're also talking about this, the, the remainder of this green roof area. We're also talking about this enclosed porch area. We're both talking about the back concrete pad, which we'll talk about in a second. And we're also talking about, this is very important, the unauthorized stairs, which are here, which were completely reconstructed. Um, and the unauthorized deck, and there's a landing here where my cursor is, which I don't know if you can see, which connects the porch on the original structure with the porch on the reconstructed structure. There was no previous, previously there was not a landing that was connecting these two porches. And if you look at the prior plans, they indicate that the existing stairs, and actually I think you can see it under here, is it existing stairs, deck, and grade are approximate. The existing stairs were completely reconstructed constructed. And again, if you, I just, just quickly, you can see the stairs in the original structure, and then you can see the stairs here. I'm just going to go back again because they were reconstructed. This landing here was, was created. It wasn't there in the first instance. Um, and it's our position that both the stairs and the landing on the top of the stairs are not a permitted projection. And therefore, Mr. Stasco was required to seek zoning relief for these stairs and for this landing. Um, they were excavated. New stairs are not a permitted projection. We, I disagree with um, Mr. Delissi's interpretation of that. And I think it's clear. And they cannot be located within the setback. Um, the stairs are more than four, foot high, four feet high. I, I don't think that, I don't think anybody would disagree with that. <laughs> um, so in addition to the areas highlighted by Mr. Delissi, what really should, Mr. Stasco really should have asked for is all the area that's in either green or blue here, which are all within, again, we're just talking about the 18.2 here. We're not even talking about the 21.45, which is our position is the correct number. If we go to the 21.45, you see what happens. Um, more areas. Right, no, more. I think we've been over this. We, I, you know. That's fine, no, that's fine. I, that was the point that I wanted to make. Um, I do want to highlight with respect to the roof area. Um, I think I can get out of here one second. With respect to the roof, um, Mr. Stasco is obviously seeking zoning relief for a por the portion of the roof, the blue shaded corner. It's our position. It's much more is nonconforming. Uh, Why is it nonconforming, a larger portion? 
Oh, that's the portion that I had just shown you that was in the blue or in the green, the green shading. It's non-conforming because- Right, but the rest of the roof- uh, no, the roof the, that's shaded, the roof that's shaded in the plan that I just showed you. Okay. I'm not talking about anything beyond that. There's no question that the roof, the, the additional nonconformity in the roof is substantially more detrimental to the windows within the rear setback, and it simply should not be permitted. Could you, um, could you expound on that? Yes, and I'm actually going to screen share again because I think this is just bear with me for a second. So this is a photograph. So the increased height of this building, which I know I've shown you many, many pictures, limits the air, limits the light, creates a real sense of claustrophobia and confinement um, at the Wyndham's property. And if you look at this picture, this picture was taken from the Wyndham's property. This is not zoomed in. Um, I didn't take this picture, Mr. Wyndham did, but I'm told it was not zoomed in, which it wasn't. Um, if you look at, this is a picture from earlier, earlier in the construction process. You right. can, I you think can we've see. it been shown to us before. Exactly. But I just wanted to refresh. Um, and this is literally right on top of the windows. And, and it's a substantially higher roof, as we've talked about on many occasions. What's the, what's the, the test under R8.7B of uh, substantially more detrimental? So the test under B is. Um, the special permit granting authority may authorize by special permit extension of non-conforming use of a building structure or land or structural alteration or enlargement of a non-conforming building provided that the special permit granting authority finds that such extension, alteration, or enlargement one shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use to the neighborhood and okay. two, shall not be injurious or dangerous to the public. Okay, so if it, so it, the word neighborhood has a very different meaning than neighbor. Uh, this has been uh, the subject of many court cases, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, a single neighbor uh, is a, maybe a member of a neighborhood, but it has to impact a neighborhood. And what kind of an impact ha have the courts uh, defined, uh, if you can generalize? Uh, substantially more detrimental. Well, I mean, here it's the the structure is substantially larger. We've seen many, many. Yeah, pictures. but it's that doesn't make it a, more detrimental per se. Well, but it's detrimental because it's it's literally, if you look at the plans of the property in this area, it's intruding upon the neighbors in such a way that that is substantially more than it, than it previously did, which impacts you know, impacts the neighborhood and the neighbors. Well, um, it, yeah, substantially more detrimental. Uh, I hate to put words in your mouth, but substantially more detrimental has been held time and again to really uh, be uh, economic impact and uh, detrimental economically. In other words, devaluing property, perhaps. And uh, yes, there may be light in view, but I don't see any evidence of a of uh, scientific studies that uh, uh, indicate the extent to which uh, light or air is going to be negatively affected here or impacted, I should say. I mean, you've well, got to make I, I a case that, that, that this is, is uh, really, and, and if you want to talk about health issues, claustrophobia and other things, I would expect there to be uh, medical uh, testimony and evidence. Well, I think in addition to what I've already said, um, there, uh, section 300-12.4 provides that you, you cannot, sh you, you need to show that the economic effect and general compatibility and harmony with adjacent properties and other, other property in the district. And it would be my position that this simply isn't, it does have an economic this effect. This is a different standard. Them. This is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood as opposed to having, having um, you know, a, an affect uh, on a neighborhood. That's fine. Different language. If you, look, if you look at the original structure, which is here, and then you yeah. look at the new structure, it's our position that this does, in fact, this and this to this, have a substantially detrimental impact on the neighborhood and the neighbors. 
for the reasons that I stated. Um, well, but I guess I'd like to understand what detrimental impact, what is the economic or even if it's not economic, whatever else, health uh, impact is there on this? It's not sure. that there well, isn't. There's, I, I'll, there's the impacts that I've just spoken about, air, light, claustrophobia. There's also impacts in the, in this, this picture is actually a good picture to make my next point, in the front of the building. Um, there's with the stairs and potentially drainage issues, um, potentially traffic congestion in this area, because again, we're dealing with an extremely different building. I, I, I wouldn't there's argue that point. It's very different. But, but it, it's and the also impact open space, that actually. has to be oh, quantified. The other, the other point I'd like to make relates to open space. Um, this decreases the amount of open space, clearly, um, because the building is, is substantially larger um, and substantially overshadowing but, but, the but windows. I'll, but, I, but I'm sorry to, to interrupt you, but all we're concerned about and all we're allowed to be concerned about are the non-conformities. This building may be 10 times as large, but if the, if 99.8% of, of the increased size is conforming, it's not within our jurisdiction. All we can consider is the non-conforming changes and what the impact on the neighborhood is of those non-conforming changes. Understood. And the non-conforming changes are highlighted on this document. And in my view, they're substantial. And they're also substantially more than what has been highlighted by- Okay, but massing, massing in this case is not, is not a big issue. It's bigger as Dave says but most of that massing increase is conforming and it's outside of our jurisdiction. It's, it's allowed. We're not, we're not in a position to disallow something that's legally permitted, uh, um, legally allowed. And I'm not asking you to, I'm just saying that the portions of this structure that are non-conforming um, are substantially detrimental to the neighborhood and the windows. Okay. All right, no, you made your, your, your point. Um, and with respect, I do want to make a point with respect to, um, one second, let me stop the screen share. With respect to the concrete pad in the back, um, Attorney Delissi makes that out to be some sort of concession that they made by not moving forward with that um, and constructing, you know, constructing something more substantive in that. But that, that concrete pad was never permitted in the first place. It shouldn't be there. It was never allowed by this board or well, by- Well, we'll decide whether it should or shouldn't be there. I agree with you that it was not part of, of an original uh, permit, but uh, A, Attorney DeLisi has agreed to put that within the, the umbrella or under the aegis of, of uh, a special permit. And B, our notice, a public hearing will be held to deal with a special permit and any further relief as the board deems appropriate. So it doesn't have to have been part of the original application. If this board feels that that pad requires special permit relief, we have every right to incorporate that into our special permit uh, deliberations. So just because it was not part of there, I mean, they're bad, uh, shame on shame them, on but, them still, but still. And I guess my point is that, and again, with all due respect, this shouldn't never have been there, just like the two and a half foot roof that's higher shouldn't have been there before there was permission anyways. And I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I see what happens with that concrete pad. It starts as a concrete pad. If it gets allowed, it then a couple of years go on, it becomes something bigger and then it becomes something bigger. Oh, I think there are ways to prevent mile. that. I mean, were so, we to approve it in the first place by a special permit, there are conditions we can put on it. I understand. It's, so it's my position and the Wyndham's position that the special permit um, application should be denied. And one thing I didn't address, but I did address in the building permit application that I just want to flag is the whole issue with grading, which you, you know my position on grading at this point. Um, we haven't seen any plans that show the grading um, the plan that I showed you earlier, the 1707 foundation plan, um, highlights that you can't go and, re and, and change the grading after you get the, the approval well, um, of the plan. And that's what happened here. A changing, grade, 
I don't know. Go ahead, Dave. Sure, you can change the grading after the plan's approved. The, sure. The, it happens the, all the time. The grading measure is pre-construction just for that reason. And then and then the you know grading always gets done to accommodate the construction. But the measures are from the pre-construction grade. Right, but the intent is, I don't think that the intent is to change the grade in such a way that it creates an, an additional nonconformity that never had to come before you. Grading, because, a change in grading does not create a, uh, a nonconformity, as, as I see it. And I guess it would be my position that if the grading changed significantly enough, it could create a nonconformity. But uh, um, of what, it what might type? not in every situation, but here the grading has been changed quite a bit. I haven't seen any any legal argument why a change in grade would would create a nonconformity. I mean, you I suppose, but I can't. I I don't. I can't come up with a good example. Let me put it that way. I think it could create a nonconformity with height. Um, no, height is pre-construction grade. I don't care whether you go up, down, or sideways. That's the whole reason it's pre-construction grade. So someone can't grade and then measure from the new grade. Right. I, I, I mean, it's just irrelevant. It's absolutely irrelevant, I think. And I mean, I don't, don't want to get into an argument with you, but I'm, I'm not I hearing a compelling legal case here. I respectfully disagree. I, the big point is, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to belabor the point. You know my position on this. Sure. Um, and I feel like it could, it could impact the height. Um, but in any event, um, we feel strongly that the, the special permit um, application should be denied for all of the reasons that I indicated. Okay. Um, and I would like to give my client a chance to speak if he'd like to, um, if he could be promoted, if he wants to speak. Sure, Jen, would you take care of that? Or whoever's got the... Yep, I just promoted him. Sure. He should be all set. I see Wyndham, that must be him. Mr. Wyndham, would you unmute yourself? If, is the muting his, Jen, or yours? It would be on him. I'll ask him to okay. unmute. Hi, it's John Wyndham. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes. Oh, great. I'll, I'll keep this <laughs> incredibly brief, um, given the amount of time you've already spent on this um, project. First, thanks for just um, taking the time. The, I, I guess I only want to make sort of two points. Um, the, clearly, I, I, uh, me and my family think this project has an impact on me, and specifically the higher roof in the back. Um, I ask you just to consider two things. One part of this process is the neighborhood's gonna have to live with whatever decision you make, right? And I think it's a lot better for everyone if they feel as if the decisions are made off facts and the reality on the ground. And I think uh, Chairman Woody, you had made a comment. I wasn't sure what is related to that. The burden was on the Wyndham's. Um, and, and there's one thing that the burden has been on the Wyndham's for this, and that's presenting to the board the truth. So I'll go back to, you know, last July, we were in a meeting, the house had already been built, they were still showing lower plans, right, of the lower roof. And then I have to expend resources to then show you the reality, right? Similarly to the last the meeting last month, in which um, the 482, 488 homeowner right? Said that the mm -hmm. patio is pre-existing. That's clearly not true. I have to then go show you the reality. And so part of it is, there is, I, I, it seemed to me, a requirement from the applicant to present the truth. And is there not, there's, there's zero penalty, like, or in, in any way, it, it, is this really the process of which I have to then show you the truth? There's no ability um, for the board to say, hey, listen, there's been a sequence of um, improper, infactual information presented to the board. What I would like now, quite frankly, is a stamp certified, you know, as constructed plan and what the new um, elevations are. And while the legal argument of when the elevation is set 
That's a Joe DeLisi, Jill argument. I have no input. I would say this, that the new elevations all around the building give a different look and feel to the impact of the structure, right? And its impact. So we, we know we don't know what the elevations are. We know we don't know what the total facade changes are because we don't know what the new elevations are. Right. And so it's just in this process to be comfortable with it. I, I, I just ask the board more than anything is, do you feel like you have all the information you need? And that's factual information. And if you make a decision from there, we can all live with it. That's the only thing I, I, I would say. And then lastly, when you're thinking about changes uh, or impact on neighbors, it's, you know, some percentage of what the town's done somewhere else. I would ask you to step back and look at the entire surrounding buildings. There are three homes very close to each other already, right? That are all built on basically ledge, very difficult for vegetation and things like that to block neighbors. So this isn't something somewhere else in Cohasset, it's specifically in this area, which already has a lot of pre-existing non-conformities that make the houses very close to each other. And so changes do matter when they're extending that non-conformity. That's all I would say and I'll, I'll leave it there. And thank you very much for- Okay, well, thank you for, for being so articulate and, and clear. Appreciate it. Um, uh, Woody, can I just um, it take uh, less than 30 seconds? <laughs> oh, oh, Jeff, okay, all right. Uh, I, thank, I heard thank a voice, you. but I wasn't. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, so I'm sharing my screen down here. Okay, you can see 18.3 feet. What this plan is, is this is the uh, present as built plan certified by Merrill engineer. And the reason why I bring that up is 18.3 feet from here to here and straight across, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't understand okay. how Cavanaro Consulting could color in a portion of our elevation in that location and say, that it is less than 18.3 feet. So we have a fact and they have a plan that is impossible. And with respect to the issue of um, Mr. Wyndham did articulate very well, um, the area already has many very close pre-existing non-conforming houses. That, that's, that's the point. That's what you were getting at when we were talking about with Jill about uh, substantial detriment to the neighborhood. What you look to, what the case law says to look to is the neighborhood in order to evaluate whether this is a substantial detriment to it. And what we have here, admittedly from Mr. Wyndham, are very close pre-existing non-conforming houses in this very specific neighborhood. So th those are my points and I'll leave the rest to deliberation from the board. Okay. All right, well, I think we've heard, yeah, I mean, I, I think we've, we've heard the arguments. Um, I would suggest that we, as much as with the appeal, know enough to, um, close the hearing and, and deliberate and, um, or I don't know, maybe start deliberating um, next month. I, I, I don't think there's further information we're really gonna need, however. Yes, Jen. If you close this evening though, you must file within 14 days. So yeah, just, I know. So I know you know, but I just- uh... Yeah, um, I'm, I'm the draftee, I, but if we have time to deliberate, I'd, I'd be prepared to do that, but I'm not trying to rush to judgment here and uh, I'd like to hear from my colleagues on the board. You wish to continue till next month and have a, a, a draft that you can actually read or? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking, so you have 21 days, right? Before, between now and the next hearing. I mean, we did, yeah. we did, You know, on the appeal piece, I think we can deliberate and get that resolved. I'm not sure. Well, actually, yeah, I'm just thinking out loud. It would be nice to start some deliberation on it tonight, but I guess if we start the then, But then we also start the 14-day clock. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't mind trying to 
you know, if we could conclude a deliberations, I don't mind drafting it. I, I would hate to sort of find ourselves, you know, uh, eyelids drooping and uh, we've only gotten halfway through some of the, some so, of the substantive issues. Oh, Woody, I, I think there's enough issues here that I'd like to take some time to digest your, okay. your opinion. And I don't think there's any, I mean, nothing's happening between now and then. In, with in, the in the three weeks, between now and, and, and the second, whatever it is, first of August. Yeah, I follow you. How do, how do the other board members feel? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm comfortable either way, believe me. I agree to continue. I didn't... Um, get a chance to really go over. No, that's that. true. And I, I wouldn't have gone through all that if I hadn't, uh, you know, taken the time today and, and some yesterday, because it, it really was much too abbreviated. Um, if it would please the board, I'm happy to um, waive or extend the requirement for filing the decision until after the next hearing but allow the hearing to be closed this evening. Um, my, my concern is the obvious, which could be a whole nother round of materials. I, I, uh, I, I'm inclined, to, let's just continue it. Uh, but but I, I'd be shocked if there was a whole lot of more material. I mean, there's just only so many ways you can, you can carve this up. And, and I think we all agree that some relief is needed. That's why you filed for a special permit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and uh, some relief is not needed because we don't have jurisdiction. Um, you still have to decide. The, the issue of front setback is the key to my, it, my mind because everything else kind of falls off that. We don't have an argument over the need for relief on the pad or the or the building height, uh, you know, segment. I think we all agree that that's going to need relief if it's to exist. We haven't decided whether it deserves relief, but. So, I don't know, I would, I would recommend it. Let, let's just continue it. I will um, draft a decision or maybe a couple of uh, contrary points of view for us to, uh, uh, debate next month, next at our next hearing. Okay. Is that so, okay with the board? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I get a sense. Okay, so I make a motion to continue this hearing until August, whatever. Uh, I, I third. don't glib, but August third. August third. Okay. I'll second that motion. All right, uh, Woody Chittakai. Lee Darstein. Michael Dickinson, I. Matt Watkins, I. Okay, moved in uh, unanimously uh, continued. Okay. Thank you all and, very much. And, and thank you. And, 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 and I, I ask both sides, don't, please don't submit a lot of reiteration. I mean, I think we understand you've both done, you know, a nice job, raised some provocative issues. Um, I, I think we're, I hope, mature and educated enough to factor those in. Um, but I, I, we don't need another 10 or 20 pages of, of material we've already seen. So we now have a new hearing. Uh, they've been very patient, I'm sure. 45 Sawyer Street, filed by Heidi Condon. Her clients, Jennifer and Michael Boylan, would like to construct a new uh, garage. And um, we have seen those plans. Although Heidi, I must say, in the last 24 hours has <laughs> modified those plans. So Heidi, probably most of the board is familiar with your original submission. Maybe you could take us through what you had proposed and why it's now modified. Sure, um, good evening. I'm Heidi Condon of HC Design. I'm here representing Jennifer Carpenter Boylan and Michael Boylan. They are the homeowners at 45 Sawyer Street. Um, I'm sure you all have the package, so I'll just start here on the site plan. There's a current um, beautiful mansard home that was built in 1850, which is kind of the highlight of the property. There is a small one-car garage to the rear um, right corner, 
and, and we believe it was built in the 1960s. Uh, clearly it was constructed prior to zoning bylaws. It currently is 3.9 feet from the property, the side property line. It is 6.2 feet from the rear property line. It's undersized for cars. It has absolutely no relationship to the home. It is very utilitarian. Um, the Boylans have two children. They're very active. With such a narrow driveway, you know, they have no place to really put their cars. They have to park in tandem on their driveway or on the street. And that was the reasoning to propose a new garage. Um, we are proposing a larger garage and one that has more traditional details. The larger garage will be 4.8 feet from the side yard setback. So it's less non-conforming than the existing, but it's still in the setback. And it will hold the 6.2 feet from the rear property line. It does increase the cubic volume, um, the existing garage is currently 3,105 cubic feet. And the proposed one and a half car garage is um, 9,265 cubic feet. So it is larger, but we are proposing traditional roof lines and details and, and needed storage on the second floor. So the site plan has not changed from what we proposed in May. Um, but what we realized kind of late in the game, and, and thank you to Jen pointing it out, that we really needed to maintain the 15 foot midpoint of the proposed roof. So all we did was we lowered the roof to, to meet that midpoint and lowered the building. So that was the primary difference from what we originally proposed to, to what you have in front of you. And we just, I apologize, I have a new CAD draftsman and he just, twisted the building slightly in what we proposed yesterday. And today I just sent you what matches this footprint. So, so this site plan in front of you and the drawings that you received today match in, in the footprint, how it's placed on the site and also gets the midpoint of the roof to the 15 feet. So, so that's kind of the, the basic difference, if that makes sense. And you say this is a, a one and a half car garage? Yes. Proposed. If you look at the elevations on A2-1, we have a 10-12 roof pitch. And so um, we have at the top of the stairs, you have eight feet, but then it goes down significantly and it's really for storage. There'll be no water in this building. It will never be a guest house. It's that second floor is merely for storage. With a mansard um, roof line on the main house, there is no attic and there's very limited and somewhat wet basement um, storage areas. So it's really primarily a garage with, with the storage above. And as you can see on the assessor's map that I provided, we've got 16 other properties that have non-conforming accessory dwellings in the rear corner lot. So this is typical of the vernacular of this neighborhood. Um, many of them also have simple gable roof lines that aren't necessarily matching the house, but just kind of a more quiet traditional um, vernacular. And so we feel like it's, it's certainly not detrimental to the neighborhood. It's going to improve kind of the access to this property. So they will no longer need to park on the street. They can pull their cars into the garage and just have more breathing room. And it, um, it's certainly a, a kind of more a pleasant building to look at, but it's no more non-conforming than what's currently there. Okay. So board members. Don't be shy. <laughs> so I was just pulling back. I was pulling up the um, the revised plan that was sent today here on my other screen. But uh, Heidi, the only the only change was like you mentioned the the reduction in height on the side setback with the new plan submitted versus the ones that we have in our packet, right? 
Yes, we just lowered the roof to meet the 15 foot and, um, and I just twisted it ever so slightly to match exactly the site plan. How many feet uh, is a setback from the road? Um, Present and, and, and proposed. I know they're So if, if you look on section but... eight of our application, the existing is 87 feet back from the front setback and ours is proposed at 85. So we, we, you know, we pushed it back as far as, as we could. And we really can't pull it forward because if, of the existing house, we would not be able to access the, the second um, bay. And, and the beauty is because it's tucked behind the house, you really won't see any more of this two car garage than you see of the one car garage, except that it has a higher roof line. And you say the garage is built in the 60s. We believe your best so. Estimate. We really couldn't find a lot of information. So whatever. I mean, it's it's a pre-existing. I mean, it's not a pre-existing, but it's a an established nonconformity. It's a lawful nonconformity because all uh, types of uh, statute of limitations have long expired over yes. the issue. So, I don't know. Well, what do, what do you think? Is this harmonious with the neighborhood or not? Is it? I took several pictures that are in your packet of, of neighboring garages. Many are simple gables as we are proposing. So we feel like it's in context with other accessory dwellings. You know, have the plans been shared with any of the neighbors? Yes, you should have three letters from neighbors in the back of your packet. Um, both Jen and Michael spoke to several of their neighbors and um, all of them were positive. Three were willing to write the letters that you have. Um, no neighbor showed any, um, had any issues with the project. Yeah, David, the, um, I'm looking now, the, the neighbor closest to the side setback, if you will, to the right was, was one of the letters that's included in the packet. I see here number, um, number, uh, what Number 41. Bixby, yeah, yeah. Charlie. Looking at the uh, site plan, what is to the south, I think, of the garage? You have some construction there that I couldn't quite follow uh, what it was. Oh, we have a little pergola, Charlie, that you can see on our elevations. Um, it does not connect to the house, but you can see kind of to the left side of our garage, we just have a simple pergola. There's already a gravel area yeah, and I'm then sorry. there's an existing patio. And I read it correct, there's only two feet between the garage and the house passageway? No, there's, there's significantly more. Um, let me just measure. Between the house and the actual garage, we have seven and a half feet from the okay. corner. So see this, this um, gray corner here where my hand is to the garage is seven and a half feet. Good, okay. The, the current house is 100% conforming to the setbacks. Um, which is also why we're not proposing to attach it to the proposed dwelling, to, uh, accessory building. Connect it, yeah, you don't want to connect it. No, anything. we don't want to connect it. Yeah, I mean, it looks to me like, you know, most of the expansion here comes into their, their yard, if you will. Um, they maintain the same setback in the rear and there's a slight improvement in Side setback um, number one on the um, list goes from 3.9 to 4.8. Yes. Yeah, it, and at 15 feet midpoint, uh, you know, and looking at the assessor's plan, it's unlikely to, to uh, 
be visible to too many people. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, um, how does the board feel? Should we, uh, we want to hear more or continue the hearing to review a draft decision next month? I think to continue the hearing. Okay. And I say next month, it's three weeks, Heidi. We, we next meet. So we will tonight um, have somebody uh, do a draft so that we could uh, close the hearing next uh, on August 3rd and uh, deliberate. That's sure, what that, I would propose. I, I'm, I'm available, so that works fine. Okay, so I would make a motion to continue this hearing until August 3rd. Do, do, you want to just, do you want to just check? I don't see any hands up, but. I did, oh, thank I'm you. sorry, Jen. As I, I was looking to see, I don't see anybody in the audience except for the landowners. Um, does anyone in the audience wish to speak? Is Driscoll the landowners as well? I see Driscoll um, and Jen. Well, I know that Jen's. No, uh, that's eleven. That's for eleven. I believe it's okay. Right. All right. So no, there's no one in the audience. Okay. Okay. So I've made a motion to continue until August 3rd. And there seemed to be nobody uh, wishing to speak as a member of the audience. I'll second the motion. Moved and seconded. All in favor, Woody Chittick, aye. Lee Darst, aye. Michael Pro Dickey, aye. Hey, Moore, Okay. So moved and uh, continued. And we now go into a, a sort of mini deliberation phase. Jen, correct me, the... Um, um, uh, what's what's been closed out? I mean, I know sure. 11 Jerusalem. So we've continued 147, so we're not right. doing anything that uh, 30 Whitehead Zealous that we start with 11 Jerusalem. And then we have the, and we've also closed the appeal. Right, of, so you're, uh, you're going to deliberate. Right, so you'll deliberate uh, the appeal and 11. The appeal and let's do 11 first. Uh, Lee, you had done a draft. Yes. And um, you want to just, I mean, very quickly tell us where you, I mean, I know we've read it, but just for the yes. record where you came out. Um, yes, it's a, it's a small uh, increase in the setback, basically 35 square feet um, when they redo the addition. This is also a situation where they're moving um, from uh, and uh, the required setback on the side that they're doing the addition is 20 feet. They're currently at 18 feet. They're proposing to move it to 19.5 feet. And they, uh, as I said, they are increasing the footprint. I've included all the percentages, but the, um, according to their plans, the addition within the setback will only increase uh, by 35 feet, which is a very small percentage. Uh, in the overall, their closest neighbors um, are hundreds of feet away. The house, the garage is 160 feet approximately, and the house is actually over 200 feet away. Um, so while they are very close to the property line, the neighbors are very far away. The house was built in 1811 and is 7.3 feet from the, the street. Um, and they sit in the extreme right-hand corner of a, a very large lot. Uh, so. Well done, well, well summarized. Uh, do we have any changes to request from Lee? We'll have 14 the only, days. The only um, change would be if when they submit the exact footage um, of the, uh, the height, which as I stated earlier during the hearing, they have stated that they're not changing the height of the roof, that it is going to stay the same. However, that wasn't in the plan. Right, so that, yeah, we decided to close it, but leave yes. it you know, subject to you receiving that. Uh, Yes. Uh, a, a marked up or a, yeah. Yes. Plan. And the last time they, they complied within a, 
um, a very short period yeah. of time. I mean, it's a not day. terribly simple thing to do. Well, I'd make a motion to uh, accept the um, decision as, as drafted with any last minute uh, amendments that we may, may decide on, but I see nothing substantive. Okay. I second. Oh. Okay, moved and seconded. Woody Chittick, aye. Dave McMorris, aye. Lee Darst, aye. Michael Dickey, aye. Earl Higginson, aye. Matt Watkins, aye. Okay, good. And we have the, uh, the last decision, and I'd also then like to make an assignment on the uh, 45 Sawyer Street so we can dispense with that in August as well. But let's, let's deal with the um, appeal. And Matt, you, had, you were on the point for that, and we've closed yeah. that. And you want to just sort of take us through the. Yeah. Um, so I think obviously we heard a lot of a lot of testimony on it, but as it boiled down, the appeal was largely based on the um, front setback calculation, and I think the what we needed to take a close look at is um, what was being disputed as far as the measurement taken from um, number two Linden and whether or not the porch um, should be part of that calculation. And I think as we take a look at how we've, you know, I, I think when we took a look, took a look last time briefly at the definitions, um, my conclusion was that, that the porch you know, that has a roof on it that's attached to the structure, um, you know, should be included. And therefore that front setback of 18.2 was accurate. And as a result, um, you know, the, that, that area is no longer within this board's um, jurisdiction because it's something that can be done by right. I guess just, the only other thing I'd say in addition to that is, you know, I think that the, the appeal, the appeal itself is largely based on the fact that, um, you know, there was a series of, um, you know, what was described as, you know, field modifications. And, and I think this board did come down, you know, the end of last year and said that, you know, any changes needed to be brought back to us. And I think, their point was that in reestablishing the the lot lines, if you will, that that's something that should have been brought back to us. But I think as a board, we can look at it and say, I mean, what John reviewed and calculated is is really setback measurements. This board's not going to want to see every every determination of of a lot line brought in front of us. And I think that because of that, we can. Um, stand firm in our position of that this was calculated correctly and that that side setbacks appropriate. Um, but I'm also open to hear any feedback because there might be some other things that we want to incorporate into the write-up that, that I didn't, et cetera. So that's where I landed on it. Well, I certainly, uh, I certainly uh, endorse your your conclusion regarding setback, um, I, I think it's, uh, I'd be very, very, very hard pressed to find otherwise. It is, it is part of a building. I, I, I agree completely. I mean, it would be wholly inconsistent with how we generally measure things. I mean, I asked John Cavanaugh at, at one of the hearings is if, we, if it was a new property, new plan coming in, we were measuring the front setback, we would measure it to the porch, not to the house, not to the wall right. of the main building. And I, I don't see how we can make a, a different interpretation in this situation than we do with every other, you know, building project that comes up. Well, can you imagine having a, a covered porch that goes up to the lot line and, and, and the applicant argues it's not part of the, uh, the main uh, building or dwelling, and I'm allowed to invade the setback uh, right down, right up to the street. I mean, that's laughable. I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't spend two minutes in that one. 
Mm-hmm. I don't yeah, I mean, I don't know if like we this note. Stuff. What? Somebody was saying something. Um, yeah, I, I was saying I don't particularly like the effect of note three in the bylaws, but it's there. So. Oh, oh, the averaging. Yeah, but I think Matt came out the right way on this. Yeah, yeah, no, it is what it is, and uh, you know the bylaw. It, it's not unique to Cohasset, but it's it's created more problems than than we'd like to think, a, a la Summer Street. That was Matt's favorite, but. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I want, you know, I don't know if you guys would suggest that, you know, we just accept it as written or if there's anything. I don't think we need to necessarily, I didn't necessarily, um, you know, add a paragraph that it was, and maybe this isn't the right way to say it, but it was like a routine determination by our, by the building inspector to to apply the. Well, I think, he, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that they didn't catch this. I, I didn't think about it too much, I must say. Um, but it is what it is. I just want to say that um, Attorney DeLisi said that, that he, he applied it, that it wasn't John. It was he, Jeff DeLisi notated, no, found, remembered the note three, which is used actually a lot in um, yeah. R, the RA district. But I mean, I think that's that's be, because he applied it. John was able to issue the building permit, and I think yes. The, the, and the Wyndhams feel like even though he applied it, uh, Attorney Delisi, John should have brought the permit to us to apply. But I, I don't, don't think really, he had to. I don't really have like a paragraph that that spells out like that 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 he doesn't have to. But I think because we're denying. The um, or or if we decide to deny the appeal, this, this appeal, then that, then that kind of speaks to that, you know. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to see about. I mean, if if there is a, a you know flip of the coin, toss the coin, I would like those things to come before us, even on matters of right. Uh, for a determination, but in this case, uh, the bylaw is pretty clear. We've applied it um, a number of times. It's not controversial, and uh, John did the right thing. My estimation. I don't think he could have turned it down. He could have kicked it over to us, but we would have been in the same place. That's so why I think procedurally, if he had kicked it over to us, it would have wound up in the same court. Just. You know, exactly. And it, we would probably, you know, have a lingering, uh, you know, lingering wonder, uh, why did it come? Why did it get kicked over to us anyway? So anyway, I think it's I, I think it's it's the right decision. Are there any modifications the board would like to make or should we allow yeah. any any further note notes uh, or notations to? I've got a couple. Um, OK, little ones that. In the last paragraph, it, it says that Woody moved, moved to deny the appeal, but there's no record of the vote, um, which we haven't voted yet, but you yeah. need to add that. And you spelled Jill wrong right at the beginning of the Oh, decision. Oh, you, you mean he, he's anticipating the move. I mean, when, when he drafted this, I hadn't. Yeah. He's, he's, he's planning on you making a motion here. Okay. And yeah, you know, so course, I took that. I took that motion from uh, from one of the previous um, appeals, but uh, that's a good point. I guess we okay. should add in the. Uh, well, it was a unanimous decision, so you can state yeah. that. I'll but, I'll, but I'll I'll have it be from the from the three voting members because I think everybody okay was, right, was, right, part, right. was part of it all right. Yeah, and yeah, and and the, especially on an appeal, I, I think we want to uh, confine it to the three voting members. Okay. Did we vote? No, I haven't. I haven't made, Not yet. <laughs> okay. Woody, Woody and or I hasn't made the uh, motion. <laughs> well, my alter ego there. <laughs> well, I'd make a motion to accept the decision. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Dave. You said you had a couple of other points. No, that's it. 
just I did get that Jill one that you mentioned at the top. Did anyone else have any have any other pieces of feedback or anything? No. I thought it was okay. Very well written. Very good. So I'd make a motion to accept the decision as written. So Woody, I'm not sure on that because it's an appeal. I, I will say on the two on the two previous appeals for this case, we had sent some language, um, you know, to counsel to just review as a you know I know you usually just accept it as as written. So I within the decision, I I mimicked the language more or less to just say that I don't know if you have it in front of you, but um, I don't at this moment. But go ahead. Yeah, I, Woody, I think you've got to move to deny the appeal. All so right. You, you have to make a motion to deny the appeal, appeal of the and, and issuance of the building permit. Um, okay. I, well, maybe it's a two part. Uh, I would um, make a motion to deny the appeal. And, uh, and what's the other part of that? Uh, of the building inspector's issuance. Oh, of the, of the building permit. inspector's issuance of a of a building permit. And I would like the three of us, I will then make a motion to accept the written decision as, or, or, or the decision. I'll second the motion. Okay, so uh, Dave is seconded, Woody Chittakai. Hey, McMorris. Well, actually, Charlie is voting. Charlie and so. I. Okay, now I'd make a motion to accept the decision as written. Woody Chittakai. It's in second. Okay, moved and seconded. Woody Chittakai. Michael Dickey, aye. Dave okay. McMorris, aye. All right, <laughs> last piece of business is uh, the uh, garage on Sawyer Street. Who's Who's got the, um, whose turn has come up? Well, want me to step up, uh, Woody? Yeah. It seems, seems pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, I think so. Uh, you know, I, I, I I don't know if we have a great template, but I mean, any one of us could kind of help you uh, with some language. Uh, yeah, anybody have a garage template lying around they can forward to me, please? Um, I did, I think the last garage, so I can do that. Okay, Thank you. yeah, the, the other garage I'm thinking of is much too, is, is, is in a different category entirely, and that's River Road. I don't think we yeah. want to use that as a template. Yeah, I, I did was, the one on um, Whitehead, I think. Yeah. Yeah, well, why don't you forward that to to uh, Mike, and, and then if there are questions, of, you know, of law or why this section, I think he could check in with you. Okay. Okay, thanks, Michael. Do any of you want to approve the minutes, or have you read them? Put my heart and soul. Those well, I sure did. I Actually, read. I was impressed. I was pretty impressed with the minutes. You know. <laughs> yes, they were. I know they helped me out a lot on what, what I was working on. So I used mine. They're worth <laughs> every every drop of sweat that you put yeah. into it. I knew you needed them, so I. Yeah, I know it was great. Yeah. So I would make a motion to approve the minutes. So are we both uh, June first and June fifteenth? Yes. Of of, of uh, each of those two um, minutes. I second. Okay, Lee has seconded it. Uh, Woody Chittick, I. That one is I. Charlie Vincent, I. Dave McMorris, I. Uh, Michael Dickey, I. All righty. Okay, I, I think we're in business. Excellent, thank you. Thanks very much, everybody. It's a, and I will keep everybody posted on movement regarding public meetings. Um, I check in about it. It's a constant conversation, so I will let you know. Is there anything of note coming down the pike before we all go home? Um, we close the hearing, but we have a do we have a doc for the August. That's the uh, that's okay. the only new one. Okay. Um, and then I did get a call about another hearing, but um, they didn't give me the address. So we'll probably set that for September. Okay. All right. All right. Well, um, who would like to make a motion to close the uh, hearing tonight? I move we close the hearing. I okay, second. moved. Seconded. Lee Darst waved her hand. Yes. Yes. All righty. Charlie Higginson. Go ahead. Oh, well. 
<laughs> what do you try to guy? Lee Darcy. Michael Dickey I. Dave McMorris I. Matt Watkins I. All right. All right. Have everybody have a good night. Hey, thank you very much all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. All right. All right. Good night. Good night.